Welcome, everyone, to Progressive Discussions. It is Sunday afternoon. I'm your host, James P. Madonna, and I am here with my co-host from southeastern Massachusetts, Thomas Metal 75. Yeah. Uh, he is a heavy metal musician, independent uh, rock band, heavy metal musician. And he um, runs the organization known as Massachusetts Beer Reviews. How are you this mid-June weekend? I'm doing all right. Yeah, everything's good. Yeah, uh, just trying to help out. We can talk about that one. Trying to help out people that get uh, some buddies of ours that get scammed on the internet. Oh, man. Not, well, not, not a good look. You know, I mean... There, there's something called red flags that the average person with uh, with the average amount of brain cells can 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 really um, they, they could really detect it without any problem and they should be able to detect it immediately like for instance if someone is talking to you about investments in a serious manner let's say it's uh, the new fad of uh, a cryptocurrency, the Bitcoin. Yeah. Okay. And and uh, and they look and they they look and dress like a prostitute. Now, how <laughs> many how many certified financial planners look like that? <laughs> now, and and on top of that, how how is Bitcoin mined? In other words, in other words, the person told this gentleman that we know. That so, uh, Bitcoin yeah. is mined. So like, yeah, yeah, you can do Bitcoin, <clears throat> you can do cryptocurrency mining where you have some kind of a very sophisticated computer system where it can stay on all day and keep. And I don't know, I don't know exactly how it works, but you you keep generating investments and generating them, and, and you're generating more and more of this Bitcoin, more and more of this cryptocurrency. So they're calling it mining. Mining. I, I mean. My my brother-in-law, he used to he was making a good deal of money using this app that dealt with like what they call penny stocks, mm -hmm. and uh, they were extremely low price per share stocks, and uh, you have to do your research, but at least you're you're making an educated assumption or educated guess as to what small company is worth investing in and you know make a ter determination it's like reading a racing form at the track you read about oh, yeah. the horses <clears throat> their their past record and and so on and so forth um who who were they sired by i mean you no know, the, the parents were they were they famous but the point is you're using your brain and i really don't know much about bitcoin and cryptocurrency all i know is it's a fad and like other fads they're here today and often gone tomorrow and unfortunately a lot of uh, souls a lot of poor souls get victimized mm -hmm. and i'm using that term loosely because people people are really foolish and naive that take nosedives into 
um, things they don't know about, uncharted territories. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, hey, Ronnie, yes. Yes, I will get into that. I will get into that, Ronnie, yes. Yeah, today is Jesse Ventura Day, honoring oh. Jesse the Body Ventura and Governor, Governor Jesse Ventura for going to bat for the Constitution of the United States as a progressive libertarian. And he's, he's of course, like like other people that speak the truth. Um, Gary, Dr. Gary No, and uh, um, the, uh, people of that nature, they get fired <clears throat> from every mainstream organization that hires them. Because they ruffle feathers, they shake the they shake the hornet's nest, and but he's been he's been going strong. Now, getting I, I will read something by yeah. Jesse Ventura. But um, hey, Bart, all right, Bart from from, from the uh, the the rural pine and pine barren area of of South Jersey, South uh, Western New Jersey. How are you, sir? This. Sunday and hey Colin McMenamin yes I send, I send you a link Colin so uh, uh, come aboard this pirate ship when you have a chance uh, greetings to you now um, I was I was saying about red flags red yeah. flags are not difficult to understand you know if it's too good to be true it is it is yeah it to be true. If it sounds too good to be true, it usually is. And don't just, um, don't just, just respond to any message. Don't 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 just respond to any message and 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 especially any old email that that's that gets thrown your way. Well, a scammer often will use a photo of a scantily clad, very attractive young woman, and uh, to entice the man, thinking foolishly thinking that it's her. Now. Uh, they do it. They they do it on dating apps. I mean, uh, if, yep. if if you look at a profile of this individual, it doesn't matter if, if they're if they're pitching a business idea, an investment to you, or if they if they 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 act like they're interested in you romantically. It doesn't matter. Look at the profile. If there are if there's no personal information on the profile about them. And they they don't have a photo album that looks legitimate, or they don't have many friends, if any. Big oh, red flag. Uh, yeah. Big red flag. And if they won't do, if they will not do video chat with you, in order for you to verify their identity, that's a huge red flag. Especially if they give you a cock and bull story that oh my, oh. Uh, my camera's broke. I wonder what would happen. We're protecting the innocent with names here. Well, our buddy there from Arizona, I wonder what would happen if I went onto Instagram did, through the chat service and 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 click the uh, the video button to try to do a video call because apparently he's online. But is he the one that's really online on that account? I think not. I think he got hacked. He needs to delete all of his account information because he started because our buddy started talking to the wrong to the wrong person. There are certain parts of the world where they actually have an office building where they teach how to be a scammer and how to hack. And they, you know, it could be so, it's probably some dude uh, in Nigeria, Ghana, or India. There's, there's a town in India where there's scammers, believe it or not, um, as educated as they are. I, I, I find it hard to believe that they, they need to scam, but. Uh, yeah, they it could be them, and, and they will use very attractive, young, American-looking, they always pick Caucasian uh, girls, college, co-ed age, to entice, to sucker the man in. Mm -hmm. And if the man is, uh, he's a sad sack, he's lonely, you know, and he, he can't meet anybody, he's going to be... Uh, uh, easily suckered. Hey, Jason Cleveland. Hey, Abbott. Abbott Labs took bailout money from the American taxpayer and used the money to buy back stock to prop up their share price instead of using the money to fix their factories. It's pretty bad. 
Yeah, that's why I'm I'm all against uh, bailing out the fat cats. You know, where where they say we're too big to fail. Yeah, I mean that's capitalism. It's supposed to be competition. That's the way the crab cake crumbles. Competition. If you you know if you fail, that's it. That that's the nature of the game. But the other side of the coin is the other side of the coin is states like Massachusetts that want to pass a law or they're going to get an initiative. They have an initiative and there's already commercials for it out there. It's called the fair share amendment. Uh, the top one percenters got to, are going to, I don't know what they're going to spend, but the, the top one percent is going to have to spend more on taxes because that's fair. Apparently. Uh, yeah. Yeah. It's kind of weird. I don't know. Uh, now I want to induct some, some entities into the chisels hall of shame. First, mm. I, I want to induct, induct a company. Thank you, Thomas Mill 75. Um, learn about cryptocurrency and mining if you want to. Yeah, learn about it. It's crazy. There's a, there's a company that makes uh, aquarium filters called Marine Land. And uh, they have a good reputation until I bought one. Mm. I got one in. Um, I would say mid spring and um, it was working great. I gave a great review on Amazon about it and lo and behold, last night in the middle of the night, it burnt out even full of water. Yikes. Like they say uh, water pumps have to be kept, kept wet. Otherwise they overheat and burn out. It was full of water. It just simply died. And the motor was very hot. Now, not only is this built-in obsolescence, but this is a potential fire hazard. So I induct Marine Land into the Chisholm's Hall of Shame. And uh, I also want to induct... Uh, so this is something that personally happened to Mr. Jason Cleveland. Oh, he, no. went to, he went to a site, a Seattle Mariners game last night. Nice. With his the Red Sox. Yeah, the Red Sox. Red Sox, number one, number one. Anyway, he said there yeah, were more man. Red Sox fans at the stadium than, than Mariners fans. Hell yeah. <laughs> so, so, hey, that's the way the crab cake crumbles. So, lo and behold, he orders a beer and a hot dog. Now, I think he, he I believe he told me, now, type, type it so I can... Put it on the screen, Jason, about the cost of these two items. Oof. I can imagine. It is a coincidence that these chicken and egg processing plants are burning down. Is it a coincidence? No, I don't know. Maybe maybe it's... Uh, Whatever. We don't have to talk about that down there. <laughs> in a thrilling last... In a thriller last night. Okay, now... I want you to focus on these on these people. Talk about racket racketeering at the stadium. Beers were seventeen dollars each, and I imagine right. I imagine they weren't they weren't imperial craft beers. Nor was the hot dog good quality a bit. It's it's probably right. It's probably uh, you know nationally advertised macro. And the hot dog was eleven dollars, and it was probably like say Brett's or Thuman's or some roadkill, you know, mystery meat. Now, do you believe the racketeering? It's that that, that, that this is insane. I, yeah, it, yeah, seventeen dollars for a beer. That's that's that's, that's borderline. I, I mean, my my robbery. my friend of uh, uh, Iron Man, Vinnie Blake, uh, the dolphin, <laughs> told me at Mets. Uh, when he went to see the Mets, this was mm -hmm. in the 1990s. I think he paid like eight dollars for a beer. I had no idea it jumped this high, but I mean that's insane. Hey, we got Colin McMenamin oh, here from Ireland. What's up, lads? Good to see yeah. you. Happy Sunday. Cheers, 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 mm. fellas. Yes, yes, cheers. I'm just drinking some Japanese green tea. Very, very good. Good, good for health. Yeah, that's all I have and, in the house. I don't have any anything, but I, I tell you one thing: I sure, sure as hell wouldn't pay seventeen dollars for a damn beer. Yeah, that's crazy. I was just reading what Jason put up there, and it's uh, like it's like astronomical. It's like 
like crazy. They want you to tip them 20% automatically on top of paying $17 for the beer and $11, $11 for the roadkill hot dog. Are they serious? Yeah, roadkill. Exactly. Oh, my God. Look at, look at, look at, look at <laughs> Colin and Eric. Cards only. They don't accept cans. Oh, my God. So so the, the major league, well, who who determines the the concessions you know the food service you talking about the prices of it like yeah who decides on these prices is it individually per stadium or i have not a clue on that um, yeah it's crazy you know it's a, you know for for the normal the normal jewel in the street that would just put you off even going to a game you know not everybody's flush you know what i mean like i i, I don't go to games but not at that price, you know. I like to have a beer. You're paying forty dollars for parking. You're paying a high price for the ticket, and and they won't even let you bring a little a little cooler with some decent craft beers that you bought at a liquor store. Oh, they want to make the money off of that. Yeah, exactly. They're ripping you off blind. Look at that. Forty dollars for parking. Each ticket was eighty five dollars for for first base, one hundred level. Mind you, 100, you mean, what do you mean 100 level? There's, there's that many levels? Probably at 100 level, 200, 300. Oh, my God. Look and uh, as you said, James, the rule kill dog is uh, 11 bucks. That, uh, Jason just mentioned. Yeah, the mm -hmm. rule kill, uh, possum, raccoon, squirrel, whatever they are. Yeah, all right. That casing. All right. That's the Chinese, Chinese restaurant style, uh, you know. Uh, yeah. yeah. Chick, uh, my grandfather used to call it chicken chow meow and chow bow wow. <laughs> yeah. Chicken chow so, meow out. Chow bow wow. Cats and the seagulls on the dock. You know? Cats in the cradle. Yeah. Yeah. Up with chicken. <laughs> Real. Oh, <God. laughs> I, I was doing that on, on every show and uh, no, nobody, everybody was like, dumb. What's going to do? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, I mean, uh, 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 yeah, cat, uh, cat scratch fever, right? They, they, they used to. Well, my grandfather, when he was a kid in the 1920s, he used to see the the the, the, the cat skins hanging up. They were drying it in oh, back, the, in yeah. back the Chinese restaurant. Yeah, yeah. That's, that's true, James. Because I, you know, I grew up in Derry City in Northern Ireland, as you know, and. We were right on the river foil, right? The river. Um, we're, you know, the, the very historical river. You know, go back just a lot of history, you know. Talk about German U boats getting brought up, you know, in the Second World War and just even way before that. But every night, you know, I mean, as a kid, you know, my father, he used to pick me, you know, my mother were divorced, you know, unfortunately, when I was young, like a lot of people. But um, my father used to pick me up say a Friday night, uh, and we used to drive up along the, the the quay, you know, the banks of the River Foyle, and there was these railings. And the railings, I mean, a certain time at night, there was hundreds of seagulls lined up. They, they all came on those railings, they rest in the evening. But across the street, there was a Chinese restaurant and this is crazy. This is crazy. They were actually fucking catching these bloody seagulls and serving them up as chicken. Oh, <laughs> well, well, you know, they'll. It sounds nuts, but it's true. It's, it was in the local newspaper. Everything. It was all over. The place got closed down after it. They were, shortly after. I mean, I mean, Chinese takeout in Central New Jersey was caught dragging a a, a, a roadkill deer off the. <laughs> Highway, <laughs> but but who knows how long it's been lying out there? It was probably yeah. all rigor mortis. Mm. Yeah, <laughs> you know, I mean, it was probably maggot. Yeah, what was that? You shave the maggots off. All right, let's clean them. Yeah, just, yeah, just yeah. Put the mag, put the uh, put the maggots with the put the maggots in the hot and sour soup. That'll sterilize it. But yeah. yeah. Curry, curry can solve anything. I bought a curry. 
And don't get me wrong, I had Chinese yesterday, you know, my lunch break. You know, I got a the lunch special. Yeah. Well, I, I eat good Chinese. I mean, I, I do yeah. a reputable yeah, yeah. Uh, lunch special. Uh, well, I, I, love, I love it too. Yeah. And they got the combination with the poke fly, roast poke fly lice on the side uh -huh. and the egg roll. You get your egg roll and your can of soda. And good to go. Yeah. So I, I like Canada dry ginger ale. It's very refreshing. Oh. That's the best. Yeah, I like that in the morning. Is yeah. ginger is good for your stomach? Yeah, that's what they say. Yeah, but, but I, I I like a old ginger ale in the morning, maybe you know, set up or water or ginger ale, and a Miller Lite to join you guys now. So right. cheers! But I want I want to give honor to something I just noticed. Uh oh, Look oh! At the, at the background of uh, Thomas yeah. Metal seventy five. That's his band, Oxblood Forge. Oh, and he's able to do that because he has the pro professional version. Well, if you go to virtual backgrounds you, in your settings, you can do, I guess, whatever you want. I have it checked off. I have the box unchecked that says I have a green screen. So it will try to do the best it can without me having a green screen. So well, how do you agree? Could you green screen without painting the wall behind you green? Or do you have to paint the wall? No, I mean, you can get, you can actually buy a screen. You can buy a screen. You have anything that's colored green standing upright on a stand or whatever. And then that'll just, the image will be able to be pasted into the background for you. But here, there's a button in the virtual background in settings on StreamYard that says, I have a green screen. I have the box unchecked. So it's trying to approximate what this thing would look like if I had a green screen, in other words. I can go that looks awesome. And fire you, and you. flames or whatever, or I can be in a drunken one's uh, room right now. Whoa. <laughs> or, uh, or appreciate you. Appreciate yeah. you. Um, NPR. There he is. Yeah. The old Alex there. NPR did a great segment on their show, This American Life, about umpires and referees and how mm -hmm. they are universally hated by fans. Well, of course. Uh, uh, unpopular decisions and how they need security to and from the Damn. state. Yeah, it's like a, it's like a Supreme Court justices now, you know, especially those going, you know, those going to the right. The, you know, they need protection, you know, and, and Pelosi has expelled it, you know. She says they're going to be okay, you know. Well, she, how much of an evil woman she is, you know. In, in, old, in, in the old days of uh, mm -hmm. uh, old school territory professional wrestling, the heel mm -hmm. bad guys literally had to be snuck out of the stadium into into a, mm -hmm. a, a into the car and expedite the premises. And, and no no heel wanted to be the last match in in the in the venue, the last match that was mm -hmm. booked. Because then the fans are outside waiting, but they they would they wouldn't sneak them out into the parking lot. They would find ways to get them out of there, and and right. because people you know really believed it mm -hmm. wholeheartedly. So uh, so we got some pretty good Chisler's Hall of Shame inductees. <laughs> I'm going to get this. Um, this honor honoring of uh just governor jesse ventura yeah I, I i i saw uh i saw the title and uh saw it during the week as well when you, you posted it up and uh personally I, I think jesse ventura is he's a good man i love to listen to him yeah the, the ex-governor of minnesota he's uh I, I i think i think he's a good guy yeah you know yeah, he's he's uh, he doesn't pull any punches. He's right uh, on. I mean, on the money, on the money. Yeah, right on the money, man. I'm gonna read what it says here for the folks. A word to the one percent. Uh, by the knowledge movement. Quote: You control our world. You've poisoned the air we breathe, contaminated the water we drink, and copyrighted the food we eat. We fight in your wars, die for your causes, and sacrifice our freedoms to protect you. You've liquidated our savings, 
destroyed our middle class and used our tax dollars to bail out your unending greed. We are slaves to your corporations, zombies to your airwaves, servants to your decadence. You've stolen our elections, assassinated our leaders, and abolished uh, our basic rights as human beings. You own our property, shipped away our jobs, and shredded our unions. You've profited off of disaster, destabilized our currencies, and raised our cost of living. You've monopolized our freedom, stripped away our education, and have almost extinguished our flame. We are hit, we are bleeding, but we ain't got time to bleed. We will bring the giants to their knees, and you will witness our revolution by Jesse Ventura. Bravo. So I got to say. Yeah, you know, he's, he's talking about, you know, the left isn't the left anymore. The left is now not to preach to the choir. The left is the radical left, you know. Hey, Commodore. Well, you know, radical, that's why they use the word neo, right? Neoconservative, neoliberal. Yeah, yeah it's, 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 gone, it's, it's gone to the extreme. You know what I mean? It's like... It's, Commodore it's himself, lo lower your, uh, your camera so we can see... At least get a headshot of you. Yeah, exactly. I mean, no, not not like a like head that was, you know, <laughs> lobbed off by Kendall. Oh, you know, like so we can see that you know you're you're a poison underneath the head. Anyway, no, that's uh, that's quite uh, poignant and uh, powerful. What you just read out there from. Uh, from the hand of uh, Jesse Ventura, yeah. and he he nailed it. Oh yeah, that, that's something. That's something that I would copy and put on my wall. You know what I mean? That's yeah, he definitely that's, nailed it, all right? And I'm deadly serious when I say that. There, that's just a boom. You know, that's a yeah. nutshell. I'll send you, yeah, I'll I'll email you the banner if you want to. You want yeah, to uh, a colored. Uh, uh, Printer with some photo paper, you can, you can <laughs> right? You know, yeah, with just about anything, really. Yeah, uh, it just it took took us through through every everything, you know that that's that we're experiencing, and you know the sheeples the sheeples don't see it, but you know those with half a brain even can see it. And Jesse Ventura again, I'm elaborating. He he nailed it. Yeah, I, I've never read that before, James. So thank you for sharing it. Yeah. Well, he, he, he left the World Wide Wrestling Federation because Vince McMahon forbid him to do the movie with Arnold Schwarzenegger called Predator. And he yep. says, to hell or not, I, I, I'm not going to pass up the opportunity to do a mo movie with Schwarzenegger like that. He says, mm -hmm. I'm gone, man. I'm going. And he, he's happy he did it you know uh he is uh an american hero um yeah anybody who exposes the slime balls um uh, and tells the truth is is a hero yeah and they're always going to be attacked too you know it's just just like you know i'm gonna i'm gonna i'm gonna say it it's like president donald trump you know he he attacked the swamp but he also said when he got in there, despite his connections through history, this, that, and the other, he didn't realize how deep the swamp was oh, yeah. until he got into Washington, D.C., you know, and there's some scumbags in there, you know. Well, well how, <laughs> long, how long? Fat cats, that's what they are, fat cats. How long He's does a career politician need to remain in office? For a thousand years, for God's sake? Yeah, I mean, the, you got, you the, got the, old, old, old bag Nancy Pelosi, you got Mitch McConnell, the old geezer, Mitch McConnell. Yeah, the, the, the gobbler, the gobbler, you know, yeah, yeah, yeah the gobbler. I, for a happy day. I call him a turtle head, turtle face. He looks like a toy. <laughs> yeah, I got a for Joe one day. It wasn't appreciate that, Joe. <laughs>
Look, that's Joe trying to grind uh, Eric from behind. Uh, Not Eric appreciated that, Joe. <laughs> I saw a meme the other day. It was some guy, I forget exactly what it said. It was some guy at a uh, gas station. He was holding up a cardboard sign that said, mm -hmm. I need to go, I need money to go back in time to 1941 to give Joe Biden's dad a condom. Oh, uh, yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. Wow. Yeah. You really, you really love the man over there, don't you? Yeah. I, I saw I saw that. Was that on Twitter? I think so, yeah. 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 I think it was all around the other day. I was like, dang. George Costanza didn't he he I he agrees with, with I, I agree with him. I, I we, we don't really care for uh the condom. It's very um it takes away too much sensitivity. Yeah. Sensitivity. <laughs> yeah. It takes takes so it takes away too much sensitivity. It's another form of human sacrifice, if you think about it. Sacrifice? Yeah. Con contraception? Yeah. No, well, I mean, it, it's a form of contraception mm -hmm. and protection, but it, 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 it because of the latex, it, it takes away sensitivity. Oh, yeah, that too. That too. That, that, that too, yeah. <laughs> yeah, the, the sensitivities. Uh, mm -hmm. Even with the thin ones. You know, uh, um, okay, let me, oh, here's, here's, a, here's one that the Commodore is going to enjoy. Uh, we have another inductee into the Chisels Hall of Shame. Mm -hmm. And that individual that wants $7 for one loaf of bread is none other than uh, Dave Dahl, D-A-H-L of Dave's Killer Bread, who... I believe <clears throat> went to um, went to jail. Let me see if I can. If you struggle to lose weight, you must see this. Okay, you can't mute the advertisement. Has just been leaked that can dissolve fifty nine pounds of fat. Yeah, yeah. Oh, Using the sample product from the popular organic and whole Another grain one? brand, Dave's Killer Bread. And all right, hold on. Let me get it up. It's pencil neck geek that runs Streamyard. He, uh, you have to jump through hoops <laughs> just to just to uh, do a screen share. Okay, you got the screen share. There you go. All right, is is it is it visible now? Yup. Yep. You sampled products from the popular organic and whole grain brand Dave's Killer Bread and wondered how it got its catchy name. You may have even heard that Dave Dahl, the bakery's founder, spent 15 years in prison. But what did Dahl do to end up there? And how was he able to start a multi-million dollar company afterward? And why does he give himself big muscles in the cartoon? I don't know. Dave up around his father's bakery, Nature Bake. According to the Dave's Killer Bread website, it was ahead of its time in the 1980s, creating handmade organic and sprouted grain loaves. By his teen years, however, Dahl said he was not interested in following in his father's footsteps. He began using drugs, dropped out of high school, and turned to a life of petty crime. Dahl ended up spending the next 15 years in and out of prisons around the country for various offenses, including home burglary. In between his crimes and sentences, he worked with his brother Glenn at the family bakery. After being released from prison in the early 2000s, Dave Dahl rejoined his brother at the bakery. It was there that he developed a cornmeal encrusted bread that he took to Portland area farmers markets. He called it Dave's Killer Bread, and thus a brand was born. Do we need more bread? Right. I mean, and but, you said yes. But we needed better bread. Dave Dahl has never shied away from his history as an ex-con. The brand owes its success not only to its flavorful organic loaves, but also to Dahl sharing his honest story of struggle and rehabilitation. When Dave's Killer Bread launched, the packaging featured a drawing of Dave, the word killer splashed across the front, and his story printed on the back. Despite the team's concerns that Dahl's checkered past might be a turnoff, consumers embraced both the bread and his rehabilitation story, focusing instead on the positive aspects. The enterprise continued to grow from about 25 employees to 300. Dave's brother Glenn had always hired felons since he understood the challenges of finding employment after incarceration. The Dave's Killer Bread website states, Hire felons, they're probably jerking off in the, in, in the, oh, in the show. I don't, I don't, I'm I, 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 sure, aside from the $7 a loaf, I'm not going to try this bread. If 
probably stuck their schlong in it. We have witnessed firsthand that someone's past does not define their future, and that sometimes giving someone a chance is all they need to become a good seed. They eventually realized that about a third of their staff were ex-cons and have since continued. Yeah, good seed. Oh semen, yeah, semen seed. Continue the tradition. In 2012, they sold more than half of the company so that it could continue to expand. Dave stepped down from his role in the business about a year later, but that wasn't the end of his work. As one might imagine, Dahl remembered the employment difficulties he faced as a documented convict all too well, even after he managed to sell Dave's killer bread for $275 million in 2015. So in 2020, Dahl invested $250,000 into Nucleos, a startup dedicated to providing credentialed education and training programs to those incarcerated by the American criminal justice system. Dahl explained, Nucleos gives people a chance to do what I've done in prison, and I want to help put other people in that direction. The idea was inspired by a drafting class he took in prison, which drew him to the realization that he could build a life beyond what he had before. The same things that I learned in drafting, I was able to take to the street with me, and I created Dave's Killer Bread using the same principles. The branding for Dave's Killer Bread stayed true to this story as well. In 2017, the company partnered with San Quentin State Prison to launch the Second Chance Project. Dan Lechinger, Dave's Killer Bread's vice president of marketing, told Baking Business, I've seen firsthand the ability of people, my co-workers, to turn their lives around with a second chance. The program's stated purpose is to provide people with the training and resources needed to make that turnaround and avoid relapsing into criminal behavior. In a stunt to raise further awareness, Dave's Killer Bread also prepared a prison-themed pop-up in Toronto, in which visitors could hear inmates tell their stories via prison-style phones. Though some questioned the idea, the proceeds went to two local organizations that brought the arts to impoverished neighborhoods and transitioned recently released men back into their communities. At any rate, it appears that even without his direct presence, Dahl's legacy at Dave's Killer Bread pushes the company to pursue reform measures within the industrial incarceration complex. I say, being that he has access to all those organic grains, he should start a brewery, Dave's Killer Beer. Yeah, yeah. Beer, if you right? or someone you know yeah. is struggling with addiction, please call the Substance Abuse and Mental Health Administration's 24-7 National Helpline at 1-800-662-HELP. That's 1-800-662-4357. There you go. I didn't know all that about Dave Killer There you go. All Dave's right. Killer There's another oh, killer. He's uh, a killer on the loose. Uh, wait a minute. Let me, let me get a little. Oh, yeah. I forgot all about him. Um, Amazing. Hold on. Ooh, there's a lot of. Damn. No, not that one. Oh, she no. is. She really? I, I disagree. No, she, no. She's on a power trip. She she like demanded to be. Uh, oh, the girl. The, way the girl. The house. He's not that serious. Woman, that, that woman <laughs> asked the asked the government. For her own <laughs> private airline, jet airliner, and they told and they told her hell no. Luckily, yeah, and, and she and she forced open a salon just to do her hair during the uh, the height of the pandemic. Just in, to do in her, her part hair. of the, in her part of San Francisco, in in San Francisco, where they weren't allowed to have any of those places open. She just she ends up just going to get her hair and nails done. Yeah, and yeah. yeah. I mean, eating her, her, her ice cream. cream. Remember, remember her eating her ice cream. I, I have no time for that woman at all. No time. Sausage casing, Commodore. Yes, lambskin is a sausage casing. Right, now, now, Todd Crisley of Crisley uh, knows everything or knows best. Uh, you know, the uh, the real estate mogul from uh, uh, Georgia that uh, mysteriously moved mm. to, uh, I think Nashville, Tennessee, with his family, uh, him and his wife are facing 30 years in federal prison for defrauding banks oh, great. to get loans that they're not qualified for and uh, for hiding money from the IRS, quite a bit of money. And uh, I was shocked when I heard about this. Yeah, Ty Crisley and his wife is guilty and a crook. That's crazy. Yeah, yeah. He, he gave. Uh, it's easy to give a cartoon uh, big muscles. Uh, yeah. Dave's mm -hmm. bread is nine dollars a loaf in Washington. You kidding me? Almost yeah, ten bucks for a loaf of bread. 
Yeah, imagine that there. Hey, talk about inflation. It's like seven dollars in the Whole Foods by me. So in the Whole Foods in uh in the state of Washington, it's nine bucks. Oh yeah, Bozo Bezos owns Whole Foods. That is true. Yeah, he does, man. Oh, is that who owns Whole Foods? Yeah, Amazon all owns Whole Foods. Oh, wow. I'll be damned if I'm paying that much for bread. Yeah, healthy whole grains in my ass. Yeah, how do we know it's certified organic? The whole grains. So how do yeah, we know? Can, yeah, exactly, James. They can put anything on a label these days. You know, when you're you don't even know. You know, they could they could print yeah. anything. You know, make make your own bread. You know, <laughs> yeah, ex prisoners. Yeah. Yeah, ex-prisoners are are probably working as like uh, a pr apprenticeships or something, working cheap. Sticking their salami, sticking their salami from the loafs. You know what I mean? Yeah, you never know. <laughs> you never know. Ex-prisoners ex give their bread a creamy, happy ending. Yes, sir. yes, Commodore. That's with, that's with butter and mayo, right? Butter and mayo. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Paul Pelosi killed his brother in a car accident. That's true. And he got DWI recently. Nancy Pelosi said that's right. That. Wow. Yeah he, yeah, he got a DWA recently. And you know what? It was all, for the most part, pushed onto the carpet. You know? Like, I, 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 I heard it briefly on the news, but... The mainstream ah. media did not say one word about Paul Pelosi getting DWI recently. Or... Yeah. Check it, Pat. No. Yeah, po poison, absolutely poison, James. Can you imagine that if I had anybody, any of us or anybody in the other side, it would have been broadcasted worldwide, yeah. you know? You know, it's, it's, you know, again, preaching, you know, speaking to the choir, not preaching, but speaking yeah. to the choir. You know, we all know, we all know what's going on. I mean, you know, they I would throw away, they would throw away the key for, um, it was one yeah. of ours, uh, sperm filled yeah. products. Yes, yes, sure. Guys. Look how they're still at, uh, attacking Trump, you know, they impeached them twice. You know, what I mean, look, look, look how they're still attacking them because they're shitting their pants in case he, he runs and may, maybe we'll get in again in 2024. And they're shitting their pants also for the November elections coming up this, you know, this year, you know, because they're gonna lose big time, you know. And I'm not registered to any party, but I do have, I do lean, lean to the right, you know, obviously. Um, but they're, they're, they are shitting their pants because it made such a disaster, such a disaster, you know, you know, we talked about mediocre, not mediocre, but very important things like grocery stores, like gas, you know, even let's go back, you know, look, look at the pull out of fucking Afghanistan. You know, look at those 12, 13 uh, service people that were blowing up at that gate. You know, it, it's all pushed onto the carpet. You know, we, we got to, we, we, can't, we can't forget these things, you know, because it, it, the, these, the, these people in government now, they're, they're pushing towards socialism, which is diet communism, you know, and that's what they're trying to deliver on, on the us. Well, I don't want to. I don't want to um, to promote um, uh, right wing capitalism because I am. I'm very much. Uh, I, I'm very much. Uh, I very much despise that. So I don't want to get too much. I don't want to get into that. But, right. Uh, um, I, I listen. I'm all for exposing the guilty. If, if, yeah. if you're if you're a public servant like you're supposed to be, and um, you take money from uh, the corporations' uh, campaign contributions, then you owe big favors to them. That's the yeah. problem. Yeah, that seems to be what's what's been happening. But you know, yeah. cap capitalism capitalism is, is good, but it needs a lot of work. But what we can't well, let. Well, if you could, if somebody's going to say, well, Ronald Reagan mentioned trickle down economics. Well, mm -hmm. it's got a trickle. It's not, it, 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 it's not a, a spigot that's turned off. It's not, it's not supposed to be a spigot that's dripping down. It's supposed to literally trickle down and they don't arrange it to trickle. They, well, they arrange it to pool at the top. 
the 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 the, the prosper this prosperity pools at the top. Where, you know that is the problem. It's corrupted. You know. You yeah. Now, now it's trickle down tyranny. You know. You think, you think that, the Soviet that, Union? That, uh, you think the Soviet Union was real um, socialism like Scandinavia? No, it was a military dictatorship, the autocrat despots uh, that ran the country. Yeah, they fascist, did. They, it was yeah. a fascist regime. James, James, how deep, how deep is the well, right? If you think, you know, of, of those, you know, big payouts that were given, you know, you know, over, you know, the, the time where the, the, the Wuhan virus came in, those, those big payouts that were given, right? And then now look what's happened. You know, uh, you get Russia and in the Ukraine, and never mind our military arsenal that were given so much over there for them to defend themselves, but also the billions of dollars. You know, how deep is the well? You know, so us guys know we're paying for it, we're paying for it here at the, at the pump and the grocery stores, you know, this, that, and the other. You know, you know. I don't, I don't know. I'm, I'm just a simple lay guy, you know, work a blue collar job, but you know, what's, what's going on, brother? You know what I mean? You know, what well, what's happening? Well, just um, throw it out there. Sorry. I, I, all, all I know is I'm loyal to those that have my best interests at heart and who fill my bank account. Whoever fills my bank account the highest fills it up. That that's who I'm going to support. I don't um, I don't like um, people that want to bring back uh, labor like it was before the unions were created, where they had uh, people got people received no benefits. They received um, slave wages. They, there right. was child. There was child labor back during J.P. Morgan, mm -hmm. the Industrial Revolution. Uh, the little guy has nobody going to bat for him and her. The middle yeah. class has nobody really going to bat for them, and 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 they have the tax burden. They should get all the tax breaks. The middle class. Uh, yeah. Now getting to the price of gas, Jason. I'm glad you mentioned this. You know the ba a barrel of oil is only slightly higher than it was um, before the uh, rush before Russia invaded Ukraine and but let's not forget, let's not forget James 18 months ago we were we were only paying 250 yeah 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 and but, but but I mean the the cost of a barrel of right. oil right. Has, has only gone up slightly. You know, it's, yeah. it, it, it's, it's price gouging. Yeah, definitely. It's price yeah, gouging. Prices, yeah. it, they're, they're price gouging um, the, the public. That's exactly what they do. They do it in pharmaceuticals. They do it with big oil. They all price. That's another thing. Besides having no trickling down, they, they, they all price gouge, which really should be illegal. I mean, yeah. I mean originally, they, they, were, they weren't supposed to do that. Yeah, Jason, that was uh, Chappaquiddy, uh, Kopechny was the name of the young young lady. Yeah. Mary Jo Kopechny, something like that. Yeah, and that's right. That, yeah. that was swept under the carpet. Oh, yeah. Yeah. See what money, what money can do for the fat cats. You know, I say reopen. Yeah, reopen. we would be making license plates from jail and, 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 uh, and, and 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 injecting the uh, secret flavoring into Dave's killer bread. <laughs> the secret, <laughs> secret, secret, secret <laughs> ingredients, secret spices. Yeah, I mean, if if, if we if we were DWI, where someone lost their life, yeah, mm. I would say so. Um. Yeah, that's so uh, anyway. Uh, 
I that's pretty much it for the videos. Um, uh, it's almost 4 p.m., so everybody can wow. pick up Basically. anything they want. You know, they want to review a beer. You want to talk about about uh, love, relationships, war. Yeah. What's it good for? Absolutely nothing. Say it again. Uh, Time is, man, I can't believe it. Oh my gosh. Christ the residential sauce from prison injected into Dave's bread. <laughs> Yikes. So it's nine dollars in the state of Washington and and it's uh seven or eight bucks over here by me, but still, I mean I, I don't feel comfortable eating bread made by uh, former felons yeah they can, they can leave their salami in there <laughs> roll yeah. it around. I, I, no. I think it's not former felons i think it's current felons <laughs> who are on uh, what do they call that a work furlough or something something like that yeah yeah, yeah sure <laughs> yeah. yeah i mean i mean of course they when they're doing the documentary or when the news people are there they're all smiling and, and doing their job you know, but that when nobody's around, yeah, right. Well, yeah, I'm sure there's a lot of nasty things going on. I, yeah, I work. I'm I work in kitchens. Years when I first, uh, when I the second time I came back to America, in uh, the year 2000. That's that's 22 years ago. I worked in the Hyatt Hotel right by Dulles International Airport, which is situated in uh, in Northern Virginia, and. Uh, I saw late nights, you know, because I, I used to do, you know, I was young man, you know, I used to do like a room service, you know, and I was doing a night shift. And, uh, you know, they used to shut the kitchen at like, you know, midnight. And um, I saw orders coming in at like 10 minutes to midnight. And the chef would get pissed off. And like this was high at all at the time, it was a five star hotel, you know. I don't think it is now, but I saw the fucking chef. He was so pissed off because these orders were coming in at 10 minutes before he was ready to go home. He saw a cockroach going across the the, the plates and he grabbed a bowl of tongs and he threw it in the pasta and he cooked it up in the pasta. Oh my God. What? And I am, I am not joking. That's, I, I cannot tell you a lie. I could not tell you, like, that's a God's honest truth. Yeah. I saw him, no, you know, because... What do you think happens hot. with the nationally advertised hot dogs? That they are, They're allowed They're allowed to have a certain percentage of rodent meat and rodent hair in the damn hot dog. We're talking about... I, yummy. We advertise, like, the Oscar Myers and the Ballpark Franks and all... Uh, the roadkill... Oh, wieners the government actually allows this now commodore that that special sauce is probably bechamel you know <laughs> that, that white sauce they put on a bechamel bechamel on, on a gyro uh whatever. <laughs> prostitution should be legalized isn't it kind of legal in germany or something like that they have legalized brothels in germany uh, Holland, Thomas, Holland, in, uh, Amsterdam. Yeah, yeah Amsterdam. Amsterdam. I, I've never been there. I've been to Amsterdam, you know, when I was younger in the eighties, but no, obviously not to the brothels. But um, yeah, it's there's like you go down once they call it the red light district. You go down one street, and they're, you know, the women are the, the ladies of the night, so to speak, as my yeah. grandma used to call them. You know, they're dancing on the windows. You know, you get on there for two strokes. You know, I think I think the brothel should serve the clientele. Bacon and eggs. Broth, no broth. <laughs> oh. Now look at this: three, four dollars for a bag of ice cubes in the state of Washington. Four dollars isn't uh, isn't water free? Yeah. Come on. Well, no, no, no. Water's not even free either. A cockroach in the pasta is better than a cock in Dave's bread. <laughs> yeah. Good point. Good point. Uh, <laughs> I'll never be buying Killer Dave's bread or whatever you call it. Yeah. No, I'm not gonna get. I'm not gonna try it now. I had no idea. 
uh, until I saw this video. That's the first time I've seen it. Oh, man. <laughs> cock, cock and bull. Uh, yeah, just be careful if Dave comes out with a... Um, uh, it looks good, too, with all the grains on top of it. It looks like a nice loaf. <laughs> but then again, you never know what tampering's going on, you know? Well, anything, <laughs> listen, anything, anything you put, anything you design to show up in the crust... Mm -hmm. It's like it's like having a beautiful Persian imported Persian carpet, and then lifting it up and seeing all kinds of disgusting things underneath it. You know, yeah. you never know. You you don't know. I mean, do we, how many people can afford to or have the time to take it to a laboratory and have it analyzed? Yeah, yeah. You never know what's on there. Yeah, I went, the, I went into a house yesterday. It was uh, it was actually the second last treatment that I was doing. You know, as I said, these I I do pest control, doing it for many years, and uh, beautiful house went in there, and uh, the guy said he cockroaches. So I went up to the the middle floor, and I, I didn't see a lot of evidence, you know, but he had a renter. In the basement downstairs i went down to the basement and you know doing the job so long you know where to go you got to go to the refrigerator the motor at the bottom you know the stove the dishwasher you know you just you know that that's uh the target areas i started to put some product into the back of the refrigerator and i was finished jay james Guys, yeah. Tops, yeah. Commodore, yeah. you should have seen it. These <laughs> things were going crazy. They were running up the walls and everything. These German cockroaches, they were running up the walls across the floors. I mean, you had all generations. You had babies, you know, aunties, uncles, mamas and papas, all fucking everything going everywhere. Oh. And I, you know, the guy looked at me and he says, Are you going to leave me like this? I says, you know what? Just let the product do stuff, you know. I would I would let loose a toke gecko, which is uh, very good for consuming. Mm -hmm. you know, the, German, the German cockroach is a uh, oh it, man, you should have seen the fucking things. It is the typical cockroach. It is you know like the like the the the, the rats they find over here are the mm -hmm. are the Norwegian brown rats that stowed away on sailing ships. Yeah, and, and came to the New World. Yeah. Uh, but you know, a rat. I've seen documentaries on this subject. A rat and a and a roach could not um, reproduce in such a a massive volume if it wasn't for people. Oh yeah, having so yeah. much food available for them, like like yeah, the, like restaurant, yeah, yeah, like in the wild, they would. There's too many predators, and they and 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 they have to go out and look for food, and hope that the predator doesn't intercept them. But over here, you got restaurants that put all kinds of mm. throw out all kinds of food and veg veggies and this that and the other thing. That this is why the rat population and the roach population is so high. And that's why you got to be careful, James. You're you're exactly right because you know you can go out for a bite to eat. You know, you have your jacket on, you know, whatever. And you can bring a hitchhiker. A hitchhiker you can hitchhike home, home with you. And you might have the clean, you could eat your dinner off the floor in your house. But, you know, you can get a hitchhiker that could come home and, and they breed like the crazy, you know. Uh, even bed bugs can, can be a hitchhiker. Oh. And bed oh bugs, God. they're nasty parasites. They could be. They could be. Uh, um, They've done a lot of bed bug jobs too, James. A lot of bed bug jobs. Well, they have uh, around Not here. They have um, uh, a pest control company that advertises often, and they use a beagle named Roscoe, and the beagle uh -huh. is trained to sniff out huh. all pestilence, whether it be roaches or bed bugs, or whatever. <clears throat> this beagle, Roscoe. They send them into the into the building, and Roscoe 
if he smells anything, he shows them where they are. He's a snuffer. Like He's, Joe a Biden. Sniffer. He's a sniffer. Yeah, no. <laughs> I hope they take good care. I hope they feed him really well if he's working and making them. Yeah. Money. And that's a lot of people think too, you know, they think, you know, bed bugs, so they automatically go for the bed. No. Those things get them behind your photographs hanging on the wall, you know, your pictures, well, you know, you know your sofa. You know, they're everywhere. And well, they you bite know, you. Crab lice. Crab lice, they they don't only live in the pubic hairs, they live in any any coarse the public. Air. The public hair is there in the back of your neck. Yeah. Any any yeah. hair that is coarse. Oh Busboy, yeah. Bus boy at a restaurant in the early 1980s. I always check my jacket for mice and cockroaches before I travel home. So I would not bring them inside my house. Yes. Damn. That's good. Now, is it true? That uh, if you mix uh, baking soda and or bor boric acid, and you boric put, acid is is the, you, is the key. boric yeah, acid. You, you put confectionery sugar to to bait them, and they come when they come, they eat the sugar and they ingest either the baking soda or the boric acid, and it it kills them. Boric acid is great for silverfish. Mm -hmm. Which normally live in your attic, I and mean, you normally see them coming into your bathroom or in your closets, and they eat material. People think they got moths, but it's it's a uh, it's actually silverfish. People say they got moths, you know, but they've never seen a moth. So I know when I go into a house that you guys get silverfish. You have to go into the attic because that's where they live. Because it's moisture, it's hot, you know, and they come through those vents, you know, on your roof. Yeah. Well, and, that's, how, that's how fungus, black, that's how black mold grows. It, 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 you need warmth, you need warm temperatures and moisture. And then you mm -hmm. have mold. Mm -hmm. You have mold. All right, let me, let's see what's going on. Not <laughs> PC this week. <laughs> Uh, yes, the old bait, uh, bait and switch. Uh, no, BC is next week because because when I asked him, he's when I told him he's more than welcome to come on the show this past Friday. His answer was eh, 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 eh. <laughs> and, and according to according to Facebook Messenger, he read the message of of the link, so he he received the invitation. I never, I mean, I never met such a big baby like him in my life. Just because he was in the middle of the wheel one time, and that's the reason why he returned to the wheel because of the way he's he's reacting. Bait and switch is a typical sleazy underhanded sneaky retail trick to get you to buy something more expensive that you're not initially searching for or you even need really yeah. it could be could be tied into false advertisement you mm -hmm. know or, um it could be any product really uh it, it happens even with uh um with software, like if you go, you 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 download oh, an app for your phone, an app, and and it's free, and then you realize the app doesn't work, and then they try to get you to to buy another program. They do that on uh, uh, what's that TurboTax? If you ever go on these free to do. Uh, websites to do your, to to file your United States taxes and your and your state taxes in this country in the United States, you can go and do the free version if you have really simple returns or what it is. But they're always advocating you should get this program. You should get the one that's got all this stuff. And if you spend forty dollars, you get a live CPO. Oh my god! Ooh. <laughs> you gotta buy, buy, buy up. Yeah, they do that at the car dealerships too, all the time. Yeah, you know, there's there's probably a disclaimer, and but it's so minute that the average person can't read it. And, um, uh, they um, 
they even lie when they when it says going out of business sale or or whatever biggest sale of the year yeah right? yeah yeah uh, that way well, exactly. that's every day they jack up the regular selling price of the item, and then when it goes on sale, you think you're getting a big discount. Jack in a box, yeah, I can imagine. Uh, White Castles are 24 7, right? Mm -hmm. uh, For mice, toothpaste, sugar, baking soda, etc. Roll it up into a golf ball sized box. The mice will be attracted to the smell and taste of the lethal toothpaste. Well, Whoa. That's all the homemade remedies. Yeah, they work. They work. You know what we use is blood thinners. You know we use a blood thinner, and uh, the, mice, the mice eat it and they die. Oh, you know? coumadin. Use coumadin. Coumadin is a is the blood thinner. It uh, it's a it's prescribed to some cardi cardiac patients, and it, mm -hmm. it's a ra it's a rat poison. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that, that's what it is. Yeah. Yeah. Now. Yeah. If Comes in a block, a block form, you know. I'll be right back. Oh, yeah. there's the area. Oh. If you use, if you use, uh, ultra bright baking soda peroxide toothpaste, it um, that might work. Now, now, are you trying to say, Commodore, that rodents are attracted to the smell of peppermint? Because I read articles where nothing likes peppermint. You know, insects, uh, and rodents. That, that's what they use. That's what they use. Uh, they keep uh, snakes away from the house. It's uh, it's called snake scram, and it's got this massive peppermint aroma. They don't and, like pepper. Spiders don't like peppermint either. Yeah, no, we we use a lot of a lot of crazy. You know, it's, you got to go by the label. You got a license to do it. You know what I mean? It's not. You know, it's a blue collar job. But, you know, you, you just can't go fucking machine gunning all over the place. You know, it's there's there's certain rules for, you know, because you got to take into consideration, you know, pets, right? Children, pregnant women, you right. know, you know, that's that's these people can be exposed to what comes off off the cam. So, you know, you got to be very, very careful. But no, I, I'm all in the, the Commodore said, I'm all in the like, you know, the old school stuff, you know, what did they do years ago? You know what I mean? What did they do back in the day? You know, I'm sure they just didn't live with it. You know, there had to be now, ways. Now, of, of, I, mm -hmm. I also read an article where to kill a colony of fire ants, mm -hmm. pour dried hominy grits, hominy corn grits over the mound and they will take the grits into the colony and when they they when they eat the corn grits after they drink water the grits will swell and kill the ant yeah because also you know if, if that the ants and the cockroaches they actually groom each other you know you know so you know if we if we put something down and they go across it, you know, could be an insecticide, not so much a repellent, which obviously repels, you know, might push them in the wrong direction, and that's what you don't want. Um, but when they get when they get an insecticide on them, then they groom each other, then that's what they're passing, they're passing it on, and then that's but you gotta find a nest. You gotta find a nest, you know. Ants, you gotta look outside. You gotta get down. You gotta fucking flip stuff over. You know, drains, whatever. You know, and uh, you know, cockroaches. You gotta get them behind the refrigerator, the microwave. You know, I've even seen them in a digital clock. You know, a digital clock. You know, and you couldn't see the the digits because cockroaches were all covered in the front of it. You know, so, like really bad cases. Where even you open a front door and all of a sudden they're falling on top of you as soon as you open the front door, you know. But sorry, not, not to get on the pass control days, but you know. Now, now the, the, last thing I want to say, the last thing I want to say about pest control, there, there's a a natural substance from um, a certain plant or food called eugenol, 
and the eugenol is a non-toxic natural pesticide. Mm -hmm. I think it's, it's spelled E U G E N O L eugenol. It is a non-toxic. Uh, they use it. Uh, they use it in the South, like uh, pest control people in like Louisiana. Let's say um, they would use that because I guess they don't want it to get into the environment. The toxic. Uh, um, yeah, they were uh, they were mentioning about Robert Kraft, uh, Eric. Uh, uh -oh. Big fan of mis Asian massage parlors. Oh, I was gonna say, well, <laughs> happy in. Oh, look at that! He's got a lovely brick oh, yeah, even background, and he has a. You know uh, what? Uh, there it is. Pace picante hot sauce with the. You don't need no education. That's the sauce. That's the salsa. That's yeah. like the salsa. You might you might have to put it. In a need no there self you. control. <laughs> <laughs> It'll work. It's pretty good. It's it's not yeah, really yeah. that important. I mean, the, the really size that. of the opening. You, you try to get your hand in there as as it goes lower. You can, That's good stuff. It's not mm -hmm. really that hot, but I would say it's more like a medium. But it's pretty flavorful. They have that ad campaign. Yeah, uh, I've, I've I've that before. yeah. You um, have the you have these cowboys and this guy in a suit or whatever is trying to buy a salsa. It's like he buys his salsa from New York City. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, yeah. No, that's good stuff. I tried that. Uh, it's been a while now, uh, but I love that with all that chips, just like you're doing. That's, you how that's, to make sloppy picante, sloppy joes on the back. Right. That's good munchies. Oh, good with that. <laughs> oh, James's favorite uh, light beer. Oh, you get a mother too. <laughs> Where's Cheers. me gold? Where's me gold? Me Where's luck charms. Where's me gold? <laughs> All right. The Commodore is hard at work juggling numbers. Yeah. He's doing oh, accounting. Geez. He's in the office. All right. That's you why, are. Well, there you go. That's why, you glory there for a second. That's why he is uh, mute like Harpo Marx. He, is, <laughs> he was he was focusing. I mean, focusing on his accounting. Very good. He's busy. Motherland Russia. Are you talking about <laughs> talk about the peepee -pee girls, the 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 Russian prostitutes that urinated on Donald Trump on top of? The <laughs> well, I don't know when this happened. Yeah, they. That's probably what what Vladimir Putin had over Trump. He probably has a. They, they had the hidden cameras in in the room, and when when. Do uh, you know what? Who knows? Who knows? Exposure is like crazy. You know. Trump. Who, who knows? You know, Trump. Uh, well, he had an affair with uh, the porno star oh. while uh, uh, his wife was carrying Baron. Well, uh, was it Saucy Daniels or what was her name? Yeah, yeah, Stormy Daniels. Oh. Stormy. <laughs> they said Saucy. Sorry, Stormy, Stormy Daniels. <laughs> yeah, that's because of Eric's hot uh, sauce. You said Saucy. <laughs> saucy Daniels. She's very saucy. Saucy right? Daniels. <laughs> Stormy. Sorry, sorry. Beg your pardon. <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> and there's so many hot sauces nowadays, you know. I mean, I yeah, mean, New York City. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I, I hope I'm not hot sauce right. from Texas. I don't know where this is from, actually. Uh, yeah, <clears throat> Texas. Campbell Soup. Well, the, the, in Russia, they might not be petite. I know Russian girls are tall. They have long legs. You know, they're they're big boned. They are, they're oh big. yeah. Yeah, big frame, but they don't. They can, def they can definitely wrestle. They can definitely wrestle. Yeah, golden showers. Uh, yeah, they used to be back in the day when Plato's Retreat was around in New York, which was a swingers club. Mm. It used to be a, a real crazy sicko swingers club called Hellfire, and people used to get defecated on and urinated on, and they had S and M going on. You know, people would be tied up and. Yikes. 
and spanked. And, uh, you are getting that done to you. <laughs> and more power to you. But no, I'm, no, not me. No, no, no. That, that's, can you imagine how unsanitary that was? Yeah, they, had, uh, they had foot fetish. They had foot fetish men, I heard, that told the girl to, they greased up the girl's foot and told the girl to insert the foot up their rectum. What the hell? For what? Well, they were foot fetish, foot fetish uh, enthusiasts. Yeah, that's uh, that's fucked up. The Beatles say it's a hard day's night. And <laughs> I be was a hard day's night. A big I one. Work like a dog. <laughs> I thought he said he was shitting a big log. I was shitting a big log. A big log. <laughs> 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 magic show or something? <laughs> <laughs> That's exactly <laughs> pretty good. Uh, awesome, James. Just like Randy did on South Park. Oh yeah, Rand, uh, Randy Marsh crapped the world's the the largest the largest. Yeah, he broke the uh, he set the new world's record for the largest uh, fecal matter. <laughs> and he kept going up and up and up. Yeah, he was not fecally here. Yeah, he was turning too. He was spiraling. Yeah, he was not fecally impaired. Let's put it that way. No, what was he doing? Taking a turd? Yeah, the world's largest. Wow, uh, like if somebody said that if somebody was obese, they they would be vertically challenged. Wow, Is that, that's, that's out of this world. Instead of saying they're a fat mm. bastard or a fat fuck, they would say they're vertically challenged. <laughs> <laughs> vertically <laughs> <not a man>. <laughs> <laughs> <Instead of> saying, <laughs> right this is a pc show for pc people <laughs> no, no, no 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 it's really it's worse than pc after 4 p.m <laughs> pcb reviews pc beer hey, appreciate you yeah yeah appreciate you Oh <laughs> where is he? Uh, 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 Jason was saying, "Where's the master Vader?" Actually, you know he's uh he's on he's in New Jersey, hanging out with another beer review buddy that works at a the Joe Canals liquor store, and his name is actually BJ. There you go, BJ Taylor. Uh, you want to make fun? You want you want to poke some something at that door? Right BC, <laughs> you now you real now you know why you keep. Now you know why you were in, in the center of the wheel. <laughs> Stop being ridiculous now. Because I put my I put my mug in the center of the wheel to show that I, I could be I could laugh at myself and, and have a sense of humor. And so so stop yeah. the nonsense and come on the show. Yeah. Yeah. Come back. You never have too much hand. And then the girl says, well, you're going to need it. The, uh, the girl, the, uh, the the piano player. They don't call him piano player. They call him penis. Penis. Pianist. Pianist. There you go. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Pianist. P on this. P on this. <laughs> Well, that's if you drink a lot of uh, what is that? The Irish beer, Mag 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 Magners. Good cider, good cider. Oh, I, 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 I've had Magners uh, hard cider, and uh, I, I like it. Well, I've had Woodpecker from England too. <laughs> no, there's there's Woodchuck from Vermont. Too sweet. Uh, Chuck, Chuck, yeah. Wait. It's not strong. It's not a, strong bull and Magners is the ones I remember. Strong bull and Magners, but I, I know uh, Woodchuck and uh, there's a few other local breweries around here also, and they have. Uh, hey, Ron, what's up, bro? 
Hey, the, the one and only Ronald J. Terrio of Louisiana. Uh, um, just about anything. Empire. The Empire, Empire of Louisiana. Louisiana uh, anything reviewed. He, uh, whatever uh, tickles his fancy, he will review it. Well, hey. now that you mentioned it, I'll be right back. Oh, we're getting a review, people. Ah. It's been a hard day's night. Shit in a big log. <laughs> <laughs> da, 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 da. Yeah, I'm right back. He's got a modello, all right. Oh, Negro Modello. Good beer. I'm right oh, back. Modelo. Crystal Pendulum. Is BC not coming on board because BC is the, the world's biggest, oldest baby in the universe? No. Yes. No. All right. Now we baby Huey. All right, what do you got? Hold on. Da, 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 da. Bring him up. Yeah. All right. I guess you didn't like it. Okay, Modelo. See, I, everybody's different. You know, I would like when people put my face in a in a in a circle and that I feel like, oh, I'm I, I'm important enough for them to worry about that. All right, anyway. <laughs> right. Yeah. Like when they were always when Canadians were always talking about me, looking on me. I was thinking, wow, I must have a good channel because uh I'm getting attention, even though it's bad. Yeah, you, 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 All right. Yeah. Um, Get attention, yeah. Like we used to say. Oh, on, that's that's nice. nice. False prophecy. This, this was introduced in 1930. And, uh, yeah. Nice Modelo. Oh, I haven't had Modelo in a while, Ron. I like the Modelo company. That, that, that's one of the few macros I, I really enjoy. Yeah, look at that color. And it's based on a German uh, German recipe, a German uh, um, Dunkel, which is a dark lager. And it's got a nice five. Thank you, Bart. Nice 5.4 percent alcohol level. Uh, IBUs are not real hot. I can't remember, but it's on the website somewhere. So we'll go with the aroma. Nice. Well, cheers, lads. Happy cheers. Summer. Cheers to you. And and uh, um, oh, look at Eric's. Uh, he's got. He's in. He has the universe behind him. He is the oh, star. Yeah. 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 All world in my hand. He's the star. Take it away, Colin. You don't mind to play a song? Play a song no, for you no, play it. We, we love oh, your yeah. We love your music. All right, this oh. one's on uh, the... Gosh, I can't remember who wrote it, but I know Johnny Cash sang it and a few others too. Ooh. Called the long, the long black veil. Ten years ago, on a cold, dark night. Someone was killed by the town hall light. There were few at the scene. Those there agreed that the one who fled looked a lot like me. She walks these hills. In a long black veil She visits my grave When the night winds wail Nobody knows Nobody sees 
Nobody knows but me. Well, the judge said, son, what is your alibi? If you were somewhere else, well, you won't have to die. Well, I spoke not a word, though it meant my life, for I'd been in the arms of my best friend's wife. She walks these hills in a long black veil. She visits my grave when the night winds wail. Nobody knows, nobody sees, nobody knows. But me. Last verse, guys. Last verse. Hell yeah. Well, the scaffold is high, and eternity's near. In a long black veil, she sheds no, not a tear. Then late at night, when the cold wind blows in a long black veil, she cries over my bones. The old chorus. She walks these hills in a long black veil. She visits my grave. When the night winds wave Nobody knows Nobody sees Nobody knows But everybody here Excellent, excellent, excellent music by the man. Cheers, cheers. It's always nice to get, get it off, <laughs> get it off your chest. <laughs> Outstanding. Thank you. Cheers, cheers, lads. Happy Sunday. Yeah, I liked your uh, Irish I songs. Accidentally, also. accidentally cheated James out of his musical mm -hmm. accompaniment last night. Uh oh, <laughs> I no, I didn't lose any sleep over it. It's, uh, what happened was BC came on late, and then uh, it took him a while to give his review because he he has he you know his words are farther apart, and he also has bouts. Of coughing, he, he mutes himself, then he comes back. So what happened was the night, the, the, the show went extra long. And so, just went extra long. were you on last, were, were you guys on last night too? But the no. main reason why I just forgot, you know. No, Friday. 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 Uh, yeah, I mean, oh, it's, it, it doesn't take that long for me to do something. Mm -hmm. That's true, you just forgot you know, it uh, just slipped my mind, like you know, totally. You gotta say, hey, hey, hey. Yeah. 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 yeah, just slip this mind. Wrong. How, how's that taste? I don't get, that a, I don't get offended by that kind of stuff. If somebody interrupts me and says, whoa, whoa, it's. Uh, that it's you know yeah so so what's um 
What's new? I don't want to bore people with a review. You can if you want. What'd you say, Ron? I didn't catch the last sentence. I said I didn't want to bore people with a review. You know what I mean? No. No, review it. I mean, I mean, yeah. or say whatever you have to say about it. Yeah, okay. I, 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 will, I won't buy it or taste it. I, I love my beers, yeah. Mm -hmm. But I love to get, you know, a connoisseur first. The connoisseur's review, and then I'll, I'll go and try, you know. I've tried Modelo, but I've never seen the black one. Uh, hold on. Froze up. I always liked it. Um, yeah, the yeah. website slowing me down. Oh. Modelo Especial and Negro, Negro Modelo. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You could consider that a lager? Especial. So, uh, so any. Uh, dark lager. I'm sorry, what was that? So anyway, cheers to Jesse Ventura. May he keep fighting yeah, yeah. and speaking that, that uh that uh website the website was making me slow was making me slow down. Uh it's um sweet, not really bitter, it's got a full body, it's um it's got some dark roasted malts. Mm -hmm. It's a pretty dry finish. Look uh, at slowing down my, my speed. And uh, yeah, I mean, I wouldn't drink too many of these because they're five point four. Uh, yeah. Much, but, uh, it cost me sixteen fifty for the twelve pack, sixteen dollars and fifty cents for the twelve pack, and with the uh, JB inflation, you know. That's not oh, too yeah. bad. It was a fifteen fifty eight. Yeah, right. Yeah, I call it the JB inflation because I like to give I like to give credit where credit's due. Um, <laughs> uh, yeah, absolutely. I, I noticed well, Modelo has a very a very unique bottle shape. Yup. It's it like does a, a very attractive bottle design. And people think that you have to peel off the foil when you open. No, you don't have to waste time peeling. The foil. All you do is take the cap, you pop it off, and it's perfect. You know, uh, it, it won't it won't drop any foil in the beer. You just uh, you don't have to waste time trying to peel the foil off. It was not unnecessary. And if you don't like doing that, just buy the can. Yeah, I see Uncle Joe smelling you. And if you you don't want to deal with foil, just get the can. Can's not as pretty as the bottle, you see. I don't know much about Jesse Ventura, so I can't really um Yeah. Well I I, I, I read uh, I don't know I read one uh, he, he's pretty much um uh, he's a progressive li libertarian. Um he uh, I read one of his quotes about the one the top one percent um earlier. Um, I heard that. I heard that when I was watching baseball. Oh yeah. Spin the wheel, make a deal. Ronnie S. Where are you, Ronnie S? Are you, are, are you by the pool in your condo condo complex? Are you, are you sitting by the pool? What are we up with spinning? What's oh, that? What's that? I hear. No, I'm I, I heard it. I'm trying to. Uh, <laughs> Sorry, I, I didn't know where the key card was. Sorry about that. Uh oh. Oh, man. Insurance companies. The worst thing I could think of is when insurance companies were allowed to pick and choose what they wanted to pay for. They would they would deny people. Uh, they would deny sick people. Uh, uh, there's Jordy. Uh, 
Hey, Jordy. What's up, Jordy? Hola. Where are you? What are you doing? Uh, I'm here. Yeah. Here's the link. If, uh, because I know they got uh, social media does not allow you to scroll the entire list of comments. They they only, you know, like Facebook has this thing where it says only the most relevant comments will appear. Well, how, how do they know what's relevant in anyone's private conversation and what's uh -huh. not? Mm -hmm. Good question. Insurance companies, Insurance companies. yeah, they, they would... Um, um, now, in, when I was married to the Colombian, uh, she told me <laughs> they were really corrupt in Colombia. They they would literally take your premiums and then just decide what they felt like covering. Oh Jesus! Oh, yeah. so you were you were South America too, James? Yeah, same as me. Not Colombia, but Bolivia. Well, yeah. I didn't live there. I mean, the girl, the girl's Colombian. Yeah, yeah. no, same as same as yeah, but Bolivian. Yeah. I, uh, I I I I went to um, Cartagena, where she's from, which is on the Caribbean. It's mm -hmm. on the Caribbean, uh, on the north northern Colombia. Oh. Beautiful, be beautiful visit, but uh, very poor place. Yeah, also. it's a tourist yeah. area, you know. Then there's uh, if you go east, you hit Barranquilla, mm -hmm. where uh, 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 Sofia Vergara and um, right. Oh, um, never heard of him. Uh, <laughs> Yeah, I was down around the necks of uh, Cochabamba in Bolivia, but then you know, I went further down in the, you know, southern Brazil, uh, a city called Londrina. That was probably around 2007. <laughs> Beautiful place, but but you know, very very poor, you know, and but but the food was amazing. Yeah. Oh, Shakira yeah. is from Barranquilla. Also, my, oh. my wife is uh, my wife's first cousin. But I, I never met her. Um, she, uh, her mother, ended all contact with relatives from That's Colombia. Why you having? She called Jehovah. What happened? No, no. Shakira, the singer Shakira. Her mother ended all contact with relatives from, from Colombia because uh, they were hitting them up for money as soon as they got off the plane. Oh, <laughs> Well, the father's side of the family, yeah, they were. That sucks. Uh, kept hitting them. Yeah, up, that, hitting them yeah. Up. that sucks because she also married the Real Madrid player, uh, Jared Pique. You know, wow. so multi million dollars, you know, coming into that family. And so, yeah. now I have for what, what, what you're saying, yeah. Wow. That's but Shakira is a beautiful woman. <laughs> yeah, she was. She was. Oh, no. she, she, she was half half, uh, half Lebanese. Her father's side was Le Lebanese. Not her a bad. Father, combo. Yeah, her father's side is the one. The <laughs> her, her father's side is the one that kept hitting them up for money as soon as they got off the plane. Oh Jeez. man! Like yeah, instantaneously, yeah. money. Yeah. Wow. Where's Where's me, buddy? Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's how she learned how to dance through through the belly dancing uh, oh. skills that she had from the father's side of the family, the Lebanese side. Wow. All right, Colin. Uh huh. Sorry. Oh, you you. Oh, I thought you had a you had another I song. Guess, I have a guess. Oh, no, I know. I got, I, I, I'm just strumming. I I, 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 I definitely got one, but. but. Oh, no. All right, this inflation. We have the guest star, James. Take out, this, take, take out of this one, whatever you want. It's called Ordinary Man. It's about the working man. Hold on. Let, let's say hi to Orangey. Okay. Hello. Hello. Where is Orangey? Orangey, where are you? <laughs> there mm. oh. Beautiful. Hello. Oh, beautiful week. It is. Yeah. Calicuti, no, 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 the Calicky, the Calicky cat is like a haunted demonic cat. I don't know. <laughs> yeah, something like that. The Calicky, Calicky cat. Calico. That's a ginger cat. That's a ginger cat that yeah, runs. Yeah, Jordan. Yeah, this one is red. And then. Oh, and okay. Then, and Jason, Jason, they they created an an adult. Version of that movie, and they called it "Romancing the Bone." 
<laughs> I'm very, I'm very serious. Yeah, very serious. Uh, before we go back there. Good morning. Good morning, Masumi from the Tokyo area. Happy Monday. Happy Monday to you. Feliz Lunas, as they say in Spanish. Lunas. It is now 5 46 a.m. Monday in the Tokyo area. So good morning to you, Masumi. Good morning. Okay, Colin, you have another song, right? Yeah, yeah. You want to do your drum? You want to do your drum? Uh, well, I gotta air it out. I gotta. I'm gonna wait till the next one. Oh yeah. Let's go. I'm an ordinary man, nothing special, nothing grand. I had to work for everything I own. Oh, yeah. And I never asked for a lot, always happy with what I've got. Enough to keep my family and my home. Now they say the times are hard, and they've handed me my cards. The tether's not the work to go around. But when the whistle blows, the gates will finally close. For tonight they're gonna shut the factory down, and they'll tear it down. Uh, and I'll tear it down uh, You know I never missed a day Or went on strike for better pay For 20 years I've served the best I could With a handshake and a check Seems too easy to forget Little bodies of the bad times and through good Now the owner said he's sad to see that things have got so bad But the captains of industry will let us lose And he still drives his car And he smokes his cigars Still he Woo! takes it family on a cruise and he never lose no he never lose come on Colin. well it seems to me such a cruel irony or he's richer now than he ever was before. Fat cats. Now yeah. my check is spent, and I can't afford the rent. For the one law for the rich, one for the poor. And every day I've tried to salvage some of my pride. To find some work so I might pay my way. But everywhere I go, the answer's always no. Because there ain't no work for anybody here today. No work today. No work today. No work today. 
Another work today. No 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 work today. Yeah. Don't work for Dave. Dave, give a breath. Nice job, James. Thank you. Thanks, James. I'm like, do I hear knocking in the back? Right now? You're from. That's right. Love Thank it. you. Amazing. Cheers, cheers lads. Jordy, good Boy, to see you. Good to Hi. see you, Cohen. Good to see you, bud. Same as brother. Amazing. That was amazing. Thank you. Yeah, no, cheers, lads. Love to share. James, cheers. thanks. Thanks for the beat. Thanks for the beat, James. I love the well. drum. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Ne next time uh, we'll, we'll, we'll lay the tin whistle, some Irish songs. Oh, yeah, it's here. It's here. <coughs> oh, they all, they all have a similar folk music. Uh, yeah. I, I, I love old folk music. I love stories. And, you know, I, I love all, all types of music. You know, but, <laughs> Exercising. Well, <laughs> okay, yeah. who's ready to see the worst poor in the world? Now, what would what does Steve Martin do, Ronald? Just uh, uh, walk like an Egyptian? Walk? No, that was the main. Walk thing. like an Egyptian. No, he did two What's that? The bang? The bangles. The bangles. When Colin was playing music, yeah, the bangles. The Bengals played "Walk Like an Egyptian." Yeah, <laughs> I remember oh, the, the nice Bengals. Like an Egyptian. Boom, 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 boom. Yeah, that's Ventura, and as I expected, I don't think I would support him politically. But anyway, maybe he's a nice man. But no, I would not. I would not support him. <laughs> I was in political positions and I'm like no. Thank you. <laughs> yeah. I, I I always liked him when he came on and started to speak, you know, and you know, I, I do like him, but I I I lean more 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 right wing probably than what he is. Yeah. I'm not I'm not I'm not so much of a you know libertarian, I'm more boom. Although I've never registered for anybody, but I'm I'm definitely heavy heavy to the right, you know what I mean? And our constitution. Yeah, one day I ought to do it. Our amendments. That's good. You know. and, yeah. And, and yeah, I'm not Colin and Eric and, and Commodore and Jordy James. I think one day I'll do a show, or I could be on a show where people ask me questions about different political issues, and I give a response, and they can determine where I stand on things. That would be interesting. Yeah. What do you think anybody to do it? Well, the I don't good know. Thing, I'm I'm wrong. do that kind of stuff. I, I know where you're coming from, Ron. Yeah. The good thing about uh, a political uh, show is you can get you can get uh, very demonstrative, which is <laughs> fun because it's good for the it's good to vent. It's good to it's good. It's a it prevents ulcers when you when you, <laughs> you vent. Right. Yes, I have been known. I, have been, I am a known venter. I am a known venter. <laughs> I, I that hey, that's a good title for a new song. I am I am a known I am a venter. I am a venter or I am I am invent venting. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I'm an inventor and I don't drink still. I drink the the most mental no. thing ever. I don't know. Jordy, Jordy. <laughs> <laughs> the beer, the beer tsunami himself, uh, a recording artist of a different uh, variety. Jordy has my favorite uh, LED lights in the background. The changing colors. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, they're not changing right now. Hey, what's going Hold on? on? I've got to get a remote, remote for that. But uh, you got it on blue. Oh. Yeah, put, put it on. You don't get the remote. Oh, the remote. I want to ask King George. I want to ask King George of Scotland. I want to ask King George of Scotland a question. Uh oh. <laughs> I am a rock. I am an island. I am a rock. I am a island. Oh, great song. 
That's a great song. James, choose a car. Oh no, all, alternate uh, uh, all of them. Yeah, all, alternate. There you go, alternate colors. I yeah. am a rock. I am an island. Uh, old Sam McGarfungle. I can make those guys great harmonies. Great harmonies. I don't. Cheers. What do you, sir? What do you uh, drink? I, I don't want to sound like a booze hound, but what are you drinking, Joey? <laughs> I am a booze hound. I'm a booze hound. <laughs> I'm drinking Wiffy 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 Bond, six point six percent. Wiffy, yeah. R Ronald knows a lot about this one. What kind of beer uh -huh. is this? A lager? It's a blonde beer. Belgian Abbey. Belgian blonde. Bel Bel Belgian blonde. Belgian Abbey. Yeah. Belgian Abbey. Yeah, well, that's it. Yeah. I mean, and it's six point six. Actual Abbey. Cheers. Cheers. Ah. It's produced on behalf of a, a Belgian abbey, and uh, the part of the proceeds go to the uh, monks. Okay. Yeah, no. So we got a 12-pack no. uh, here for 13 pounds and 36 pence. All right. Which is pretty good, I think. Yeah, no. Uh, considering none of these, that it's important, no, and considering no, the ABV. None of those monasteries are allowed to produce beer where it's the only source of their income. It has to go... The secondary, secondary is the beer. The primary function of whatever they're producing and selling has to go towards the betterment of their monasteries. That's they can't. You can't just you can't just become right. a, a, a a Belgian style monk or whatever just because you want to brew beer. That's not really how that actually operates in any regard. Yeah, yeah. Right, right. The brewing was done to raise funds for the char charitable operations of the monastery. Correct. Like a yeah. fundraiser at school, basically. Yeah, it's yeah, a, yeah. Usually yeah. the hermits, the hermits are good. Yeah. Oh, hermit hermits, the uh, hermits, hermits. These rock, rock band. Oh my god! Hermit, 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 hermit. Hermit. I remember that. James. I never thought we were going to talk about that today. <laughs> now, let me, ask, let me ask you a question: Do they do they at least provide heavy socks for the monks in the winter time or do they wear the sandals like all year round <laughs> i don't know they got to create those socks probably I'll tell you what, like, <laughs> i got i know something about that i'll i'll say something about that <coughs> <coughs> the church where my father goes was staffed by the dominican order all right mm -hmm. And the Dominicans all wear the uh, cloaks and the, and the uh, hood. Yeah. yeah, the Franciscan friars wear it, right? Right. Uh, they might, yes. But the, the Dominicans, Franciscan I noticed prior. that one of the priests. Yeah. Yeah. One, of them, yeah. Yeah. one of the Dominican priests at that church, Holy Ghost Church, it could be winter time. I don't care how cold it was. There he was with those sandals on. His bare feet, I thought to myself. Or he must have uh, tough feet. I couldn't. My feet get cold easy, you know. I couldn't so, do that. So, so they have the they have the robe with the hoodie, but but their feet could be really cold. I don't know if they all do it. I just remember that one priest with his feet in cold or winter, and I was thinking, I don't know how he could take that. You know? <clears throat> yeah, he's 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 doing his <clears throat> he's doing his parents wrong. That's what he's doing. Prior he's a, no he's spiritual prior doing his prior, penance. Yeah, his penance. It's like it's prior, like an prior, island prior, yeah. up to Ireland called Loch Derg. And uh I, I've never done Loch Derg, but a lot of people they go there and they start on a Friday, bare feet. It's all you know it's all you know supported by the monks. And it's on an island. You got to cross on a boat. You're in your bare feet, and you don't sleep for the Friday, the Saturday, and then the Sunday. You know, then that that that's when you leave. But it's a pure pilgrimage. And uh, I've never done it. I would love to do it. You know, lands yeah. another school, so well, to speak. Well, yeah, that they have a they have a. Um, the Jesuit order runs a retreat center not far from me on along the mm -hmm. Mississippi River. 
and people stay uh-huh. there, but it's not, it's, it's nothing like that, you know. But uh, yeah. now that you mention that, I'll say this real fast because I'm about to get off. Uh, tomorrow night, tomorrow they got night. a priest from Rome, and he's bringing relics. He's bringing relics to the church to show people he's got a piece of Mary's tunic. He's got a piece of the, the true cross, a, a relic with wood from the true cross, and uh, all kind of relics, you know. First wow. class relics, they call I think them. It was olive. I think it was olive wood, if I'm not mis- mistaken. Uh, yeah, no, that's amazing. Wow. For the crucifixion. Um, Damn. There's a lot of, I was reading about it yesterday. There's a lot of legends about the true cross that I was amazed by. Now, whether they're true, I don't know, but apparently uh, the wood from uh, uh, Moses' staff, which budded, was planted and it became a tree and it was uh, cut down and used by the Romans to crucify Jesus. From the Ark of the wow. Covenant. So, uh-huh. Oh wow! Oh, the, yeah, the staff when he when he brought the tablets of the the Ten Commandments down from Mount Sinai. Yeah, and, and then remember they put the tablet in the Ark of the Covenant. Remember he had a a staff and it it started budding. And it was coming out. It was growing leaves and flowers. On. Yeah, Charles and Hanson did that in the movie, right? Yeah. Well, they, they, they turned to paganism though when they came down from the mountain. They 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 had the, they made the golden calf, which is a which is a, a particular pagan god that uh, come from, from I think Babylon or something or Assyria, uh, not Assyria. Yeah, it's an, old, it's an old god that they sacrificed. They did. They gave. A lot of these days. Pagan gods these days. Look, look at Moloch. You know, Bale. the god of child, the god of child sacrifice. You know, that's what, that's why we have so yeah, much abortion. Yeah. You know. Right. And uh, yeah, no, that that but phew, that's awesome, bro. Uh, yeah, I wish I wish it was there. I wish it was there. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I might go. I might go look at those because they had a church in a town, twenty miles away, and they had twelve hundred people went to see it the other night. So I'm curious. Damn. Yeah. 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 No, this, yeah. This, world, this, this world's in a bad shape, you know. You know, look at look 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 what they look, look at what they celebrated like yesterday. It was like, you know, the pride thing, right? And yep. It's so oh, yeah. blasted, blasted all, all over the world, you know, and what they're really promoting is homosexuality, right? So, you know, if you look back, you know, and you read old time Sodom and Gomorrah, you know, hey, we're fucking, we're on a knife age. We're mm-hmm. on a knife age. If you believe Bible, you know, prophecy, you know, which I do, you know, you know, you know, um, um, but the way people are out celebrating, you know, this, that, and the other, damn man, batting down the hatches, you know, get right with God, you know, get yourself, you know, get our, ourselves together because, hey, you know, how, how long can the Blessed Mother keep our Lord's hand from going boom? You know, we only can pray so much. Yeah, it's, uh, these things, uh, yeah, these are, uh, Definitely true. What you're saying is definitely true. Mm-hmm. And, uh, yeah. Look at our lady of Akita in Japan. In Japan. Yeah, 1970. Thomas, what you got going on there? Oh, okay, well, look, I, I, would like to, I would like to keep talking, but uh, I'm going to head out, uh, James. Y'all take care now. Wrong. Good to see you. Here, Toronto. Thank, Thank, you. Care, Roman. Thank you for stopping by. All right, Ron. Peace and love. You, Until next Peace. time. Sweet. You're welcome. Take yeah, care, yeah. everybody. Until next time. Have a good evening. All right, Ron. Bye. Thomas got long. Enjoy. Bye.
Oh yeah, Thomas. That's what's up. James, get your drums out. Can anyone please sunshine of your love? You are the sunshine of my love. Do, 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 that one. Thank you, Thomas. All right, Thomas. Right, yeah, get, yeah, getting back to the um, to the Israelites turning to paganism when when Moses. Uh, after all Moses did to them, and he came back from down from Mount Sinai with the tablets and he made the golden cap something got it off the top of the head. It was an actual pagan god that they that they did, like like uh, Tomador was mentioning, they did human sacrifices too. Damn. Uh, yeah, the golden calf, yeah. <laughs> Look at the Aztecs. Look, look at Mexico. What they used to do, you know, the the Aztecs. You know, the, the yeah. 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 They, would, they would take like a, a young virgin female, and they would cut the heart out and yeah. Well, the man was no life. They cut his heart out, then they threw him down the bottom, and the rest of them would eat him. They put him on the barbecue, you know. It's like you know, fun, they, fun, they, they actually thought that that volcano, when it erupts and there's earthquakes and everything, they, they that the god was angry. They thought the god lived in Paganism. that volcano. By 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 uh, Mexico City, there's a big active volcano. Yep. It's still yeah, that, that's that's why I don't understand why Christopher Columbus gets a bad rap. You know, sure. You know when when they when they came across. You know, they came into Mexico and South, Central South America. You know, they, they were bringing Christianity. And sure, there's bad seeds among everybody. Sure, guys doing things wrong. But you know yeah. what? You know what? He, he, fought, he fought hard. He fought hard. They rejuvenate, you know, that, that population at that time. You know, and now we get the, these old people. And they're taking down a statue, and you know, yep. statues of everybody. They force, you know. They force. Yeah. They, they Every force. angel has their demons. Every yeah. angel. Has their demons. Mm -hmm. They they did proselyt they proselytized they forced uh, the European uh, customs on the native people, but uh, like with the Spanish Inquisition, you know, you either agree with the Pope or or we torture you and kill you. You know, yeah, but uh, yeah, exactly, James. But think how they were living at that time. It was pure paganism. So, like, how is the gospel going to travel? You know what I mean? You know, there's been the Crusades before. You know, but you know, you go into South and Central America. How is the gospel going to travel? There, you, there's going to be there's going to be fighting. There's going to be war. You know, especially with indigenous people. You know, with all due respect, them. I you know I was married to a lady from Bolivia for, you know, twelve years. So yeah. I you know, you know, I've, I've been down around that part of the world. But what hurt? What hurt them? Just like the South Pacific Islanders and Native Americans, what hurt them is the smallpox that was brought from Europe. But that wasn't yeah. that wasn't intentionally done. You know, that was accidentally done by you know. Wiped out so many tribes of, of Native American, ladies, you know, the, the original people, beautiful people. I've worked with many and I still do. Beautiful people. They welcome yeah, me into their home. That's a nasty, that's a nasty, nasty disease, smallpox. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Smallpox. 
Yeah, well, that was yeah what about monkeypox now, right? Oh, no. Right, Thomas. We're going to find out. I mean, I, I heard on the news, they talk about it starting as a respiratory issue and water drop, what's getting thrown around, and that's how we're getting thrown around, getting airborne, and that's how it prolongates. I don't know enough about monkeypox to tell you exactly what it is, but it's another respiratory issue with more droplets, and you're going to need to wear a mask due to monkeypox. Hopefully you know, not. Hopefully not. Hopefully not. Hopefully not. I've, I've never I never heard about monkeypox until about three weeks ago. Three when I came up, somebody said it on the news. You know, I heard of chicken pox. I had the chicken pox when I was a kid. Me too. You know, but I was, you know, I get, you know, you always get your boosters or whatever you got when you were young, you know. Monkey pox never even heard about it. Well, the big news uh, was the sexually big news right now was is that they talked about for coming into the U.S. of A, the international travelers don't need to do the same kind of testing before they come over here mm -hmm. for COVID-19. It's not necessary anymore, which is, seems like that's a great turning point The if uh, health organizations in this country are saying that. It seems like we're in a very good point in the, in the United States. I don't know about the rest of the world here, but it seems like that's a good sign of I already kind of feel like I live in the Northeast. I live in Massachusetts. We've, mm -hmm. it was a little rough at first just doing what we had to do and just getting it done, but it seemed like it was, it worked luckily. So at hindsight, it worked really well. You know, during the middle of a pandemic, it seems like all these, I'm not going to storm, I'm not going to storm the castle here. No, January 6th, but it seems like it, it almost felt like all these restrictions and, you know, average Americans can't be average Americans ever again, but. So in, in some regards, you look back on this and you're like, you know what? If we didn't do that, we wouldn't be in the place we are about right now. So there's a little bit of a give and take. But how? I guess the question is, for any for any society, how much of a give and take do you actually? How much? How much do you actually give to get something back? Right. That's the big question. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I mean, it's um, a monkeypox. Is um, they claim is sexually transmitted, but we don't know. They might turn around and say uh, it's it's airborne. You know, it's monkeypox. So monkeypox. Monkeypox. Monkey oh, hold on. Instead of brass monkey, that funky monkey can go. You sound good, bro. You sound good, brother. Monkey, monkey pox. Yeah. Monkey pox. That funky monkey. I don't know how to play this one. Yeah, no, he's good. It, you know, Eric is good at the guitar. He's got a problem. Well, if I put start playing Eminem, your stream's gonna get shut down. Let's not do that. Oh, that was Eminem. Oh, yeah, that's a great song too. Yeah, the Eminem song. Oh, you got that acoustically? Yeah, that's awesome. Taylor guitar there. Taylor 314C. E, I got it from a buddy Brand. of mine. Leo. He didn't he didn't like it. So there we Ring go. Fire. Make error in my favor. Beautiful. Oh. I don't know how to play that. <laughs> Ring of fire. That's the uh B flat major. Holy crap. Ask me to play chords. <laughs> I'm 
Eleanor's skull is getting very shiny. <laughs> it's I fell in the ring of fire. <laughs> And burns like a ring of fire, like a ring of fire. And it burns like a ring of fire, down, 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 and the flames they went higher. And it burns, 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 like a ring of fire, like a ring of fire. <laughs> something like that. If I find the key, I can. Oh, that was good. Yeah. Good song. Yeah. Yeah. Well, well, then you're sitting with the great ball. I got to play a B flat. Wait a minute. Oh, there it is. Love the song, Dodd Taylor. Yeah. 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 It's beautiful. Piano like. It's got the lows, it's got the highs. Oh, yeah. It just it's got, brings it's out good. like a piano. It it's got heart. It's got heart. Pure heart. Yeah. It's like game drum. <laughs> James Taylor, don't 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 say anything. I was gone. Soon as then the plans are made for an end of years. I've seen fire and I've seen rain. Seen sunny days that I thought would never end. Seen lonely times when I could not find a friend. But I've always thought I'd see you. Jesus. Yeah, no, it's a great song. You want to learn James Taylor, you got to learn one chord. He does that all throughout his songs. He's very good finger picking. So, yeah, like a piano, I can't really, I cannot sing, but I try to finger pick and figure out chords with the vocal melody on top of that. Like a awesome. Cause you don't want to hear me sing, but I can play the instruments, okay? Yeah, man, not so being is difficult. Yeah. yeah, and the more you study other musicians and what they do, it you're not don't think of it as copying. You're not copying. You know, and then you write your own music and it sounds exactly the same. Take some techniques and uh, make them your own. Learn. Yeah, yeah. yeah Learn. Absolutely. Borrow, borrow ideas, ideas, not not songs, but borrow ideas from people. Yeah, absolutely, Thomas. Yeah, that's uh, I get by all, all my life playing music, which I don't do anymore. But you're exactly right, brother. Yeah, right. It's, uh, it's been good to me whenever I did it. You know, now I don't do it anymore, but it was good. You know, at the time, you know, it was extra bucks. Travel in different places. Sure. Uh, you know, but I burned out. You know, I burned out. You know. Oh, but, hey, who knows? It's, it's it's beautiful to sit here and listen to yourself playing, and you know, James, you know, on the drum, and Come you on. know, it's it's uh, it's fabulous just to actually sit and hear people express. You know. Express the talent. You know, you know, it's a nice place to get a spot to do yeah. uh, to do a good street performance. Is when they have these uh, art festivals around here. Yeah. We have all different kind of artists, all kinds. I mean, not, not just painting. There, there's sculptors. 
there was a one guy named Poncho that that made sculptures out of metal. He he you know he welded everything together and he made these sculptures and and they have rock bands. They have an area where it's rock band. They have area. Everybody's where... got their own definition of what art is, right? Yeah. Right, exactly. Uh, those belly dancers. They had an area where they played. Middle Eastern music, and but it was huge. It's like, uh, um, it was like, uh, like a, a former um, industrial area that is a hundred years old, like the building, and they and they had all these exhibits inside and outside, and it's really nice. They called it an art walk. Nice. You got to spin yeah. the wheel of mythicality here, huh? Yeah, I just want to say hi to Daryl. Daryl, thank you, sir. Appreciate it. Northern California. Hey, Daryl. He up, Daryl? literally lives in a town. It's called Cool, Cool, California. Oh, he oh he's from is a town called Cool, cool California. That's cool. Oh, 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 that's cool. Yeah. Well, if you live in Cool, you're no fool. <laughs> Cheers, Daryl. And uh, uh, you you should really examine your stool. Because it's cool? No, no, no. no. Never mind. You know, Daryl, you, you, you missed Collins uh, singing twice. Twice, nice. Yeah, two songs. Yeah, a couple of, a couple of old folk songs, guys, you know. What I grew up with, and it's always ingrained. People sometimes say, "Oh, you're pigeonholed," you know this, that, and the other. But hey, that's that's what I grew up with. Yeah, well, you don't want to be the jack of all trades and the master of none. Uh -huh. Right. So, what's on this magical wheel? We got a lot of topics on the wheel. Yeah, what we got? What we got here, bro. We got uh, in it. Spin that wheel. We're ready. Well, well, well. Uh, this is the last time, uh, or not the last time. Well, yeah, I would say the the, the, the image is going to change starting next week, uh, without a doubt. Okay. We'll who's see. who's on there next week? <laughs> He's the PC, you know, the baby. The, 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 the Friar, Friar Tuck, Friar No Tuck. No. <laughs> I don't know how to play that. Ah, yes, yes. That pencil that geek that on the stream yard telling me that I've used up almost all of my free 20 hours, which is a lie. I could be like 50%. I, I could be, oh, I could only like last week, it said I used up uh, eight hours and four minutes of my 20 free allotted hours. And he claims I'm almost to the end. I'm a, streaming, yeah. I'm a streaming machine. I need to sign up for the professional version. Well, yeah. a little birdie might be able to help you out with that if you want. It's, uh, well, no, I, I, I really, I mean, you really have to uh, know how to navigate around the professional version. It's you. The other thing with the premium version, which I don't feel like it really matters to no disrespect to anybody here, but I don't think it matters to people like us where you go into StreamYard and it tells you, you get 50 hours of recording and then it won't record anymore. But that doesn't mean that if we're doing what we're doing this, right. And we're going and we're and we're using StreamYard straight to YouTube. That doesn't mean the YouTube video gets to be, get, get, no. get to be. No, uploaded. You, no, you, it will, you it can't, will be you, can't re, you can't go back into anything past 50 hours of recording and you can't download it from you can't download it from from StreamYard. but you can certainly just go log into your 
YouTube account and download the the live streaming that just got uploaded through that. So but, it doesn't really matter. But with the professional version, you can stream to multiple locations on 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 social media. Yeah, I got I got to look at I got to look into trying that. I, I had I had Facebook set up to do that too, but mm -hmm. I think it's I have to look at how to actually do it. There's one thing that our buddy beer man does it's called restream so you can restream to like three four five different styles of platforms if you want if you wanted to be here you want to be on your facebook but oh i'm doing something business wise i want to stream it to linkedin you could do one stream one restream and it goes to everywhere and you don't have to monitor any of it and when you look at the comments you're going to see with the little icon who's commenting from where is it from linkedin is it from facebook is it from youtube yeah. you'll be able to know well if you when you you would have to set up ahead of time for wildcard wednesday yep and 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 then it'll it'll ask you well i won't ask you the icons would show up and then you would normally click on on youtube but yes with the with the pro version you can click on facebook and have it I, I guess I don't know. It's got to be a page, I think. I got. I got to look into that. Yeah, but I, I should be able to do something like that. I don't think it'll be. I don't think it's. It'll go on to a group. I think it would have to be a page, or listen. Even if it's. Even if it's neither or either one. Oh. If, if you stream to your profile, you can share it with Massachusetts Beer Review Group. I so mean, let me see here. Whoops, wrong button. Let me share really quickly the screen just so you can see it. Uh, screen, sure, why not? All right, share that really quickly. So if you go into, so if you go into Streamyard and you click Create a Broadcast, this broadcast to Alex the Beer Masters on mine, so he can he can use it, and that's why he has the panel. I gave him that option. It didn't cost me any extra to allow him to do that. So I can click on Thomas Metal. And then I can click on myself on Facebook and then, you know, you can custom. I haven't done, I'm going to have to try that next week. I haven't really done it, but you can customize for each destination, what you want, how you want to set up that stream for each destination. So that's pretty good. I should try that. And the other thing I was talking about here down on the bottom of the screen is storage, recording storage. You are, you're, they give you with this 15 or sorry, what, what is it? It's $25 a month. It's kind of expensive to do all this, but. But I never, you, I, I never bother with the save. Uh, um, it doesn't well, bother I, me. What I'm getting at is yeah. what I'm getting at with that is, is it gives you 50, uh, streamer gives you the 53 hours, uh, you know, you know, worth of storage so that you can go back into, into StreamYard. And download the video from StreamYard. I mean, you could probably just do that if you have an account to all these other sites that you're streaming to. You can just go right in there and download the the, the, the video after that. Or you can do that on YouTube. You don't have to go through StreamYard to do that. Yeah, I'm just. So it doesn't wondering. matter. So the amount of so so if I have Alex the Beer Master and then say I wanted to add James P. Madonna, that whole number of hour storage thing isn't going to mean anything. It just tells you when you set up a stream that. You know you're over 50 hours. You know you can't download this later, right? It's like, I don't care. Well, the good thing about having Alex there is he he covers for you when you can't make it on a Wednesday. Yep. So, so he right. does the wild card Wednesday. You know, like when jo uh, uh, Johnny Carson had the, the guest host on Monday, you know, and he, had a, you know, he, he, he took a break. So you can right. take a break anytime you want. Alex uh, is more than happy to, to cover for you. Um, yeah, if I got band obligations or whatever with the other band I, with that Uxblood, I drum in. He will. He's very vocal about. I'll do the wild card. I'll do your show. I'm like, go right ahead. Yeah. You know, but, but yeah, definitely check on the multiple stream and see how where it would put the show on Facebook. Does it have to be a page? Can it be uh, a group? Um, I wonder if I could set it up that way because I I have a Massachusetts beer to use page on facebook that i like to use it on but just having it going to my regular account on facebook would 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 what it would do is anybody that's scrolling around that sees that i'm sees that i posted something is instantly going to show up on the on the uh number of viewers and then when they scroll past it then the, that viewer goes away 
Well, I like the page. I, you know, people click like to it, and uh, it seems more it seems more important than a group. It's like a higher echelon of uh, you know. extension of of what what I do on the YouTube. That's it. Continue yes. the discussion there if you want. Yeah, yeah man. Fun it than I do. Anyway. Yeah, give it a give it a shot or on your spare time. So you know, navigate and and play around with it and see what you come up with. This is probably going to sound a little bit like uh, the old Gordon Lightfoot song, the regular image of Cheryl. Oh, Black yeah. Featuring Jane. 1803, I sailed up the sea. I grew up in the sweet town of Derry. We were Australia bound, the foot didn't all drown. The marks of our fathers we carry. In our rusty iron chains, we cried for our wings. Good women we left in sorrow. As the main sails unfurled and the voices were hurled on the English and thoughts of tomorrow. Oh, 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 I wish child was my commentary. Oh, 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 I wish I was my commentary. At the mouth of the foil, the farewell to the soil, as down below decks we were lying. Oh, the hearty screen, walking out from a dream. Fishing on a bold rubber diet. As her first train crew and her bus was the screw, pretty women were buried each morning. As the main sails and furled and their voices were heard, on the English and thoughts of tomorrow. Oh, 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 oh. That song that actually it sounds like the Reckley Edmund Fitzgerald, which, which was written by Gordon Lightfoot, you know, a Canadian player. And uh, that one was written actually by a guy called Bobby Sands. He died in hunger strike in 1981 in, uh, in North, Northern Ireland in a uh, black cell. And, uh, you know, and he, he, he wrote the poem, and then there was a guy called, there's a lot of guys on here, right? So you Gordon Lightfoot, you Bobby Sands, then you had an Irish folk artist called Christy Moore, M-O-O-R-E, uh, who uh, actually took Bobby Sands' lyrics and took the melody of Gordon Lightfoot's The Wreck of the Edmonds with Gerald, Lake Superior, uh, and then he married he married the two you know so yeah thanks Daryl. you know he, he, he married two and it's <clears throat> haven't played for a long time but 
Next time, James, you permitting and all the lads, you know, I'll come on. Yeah. I'll, I'll knock out the phone. Yeah, I'll yeah, knock out the phone. Yeah, I, I, I don't think Eric um, heard you, but you, uh, Colin plays the Irish uh, tin whistle very well. Thank you. Plays, mm. play, yeah, he plays it very well. It's, uh, it's simple. simple. <laughs> yeah. Well, I mean, it's... Um, it's something it's something that's usually heard around St. Patrick's Day. Uh, yeah. I like the sound of it. Very, uh, it yeah. reminds me of the recorder. You know, the, the, yeah, there it is. The recorder. Uh, mm. not, not the big recorder, the small one. Tim whistle, Tim whistle, or what they call it was a penny whistle. You know, you know, they actually used to be made of tin. This one's actually made of plastic. You know, but it's got a beautiful sound. It's in the key of D. And if if he's like James Thomas Commodore, yeah, uh, I'll I'll do an old song that came out of the old uh, Liam Neeson film. It's an it's an old ancient song actually, but it was played in the the Liam Neeson film, uh, Michael Collins, and it's called "She Moves Through the Fair." It's an old Irish wedding song, like it's ancient. Oh. You know, I. I don't even know they, you know, he wrote it, you know, and I don't think anybody really does, but a lot of people have covered it. So if you guys want, I'll, I'm going to push back because the whistle's so high pitched. I don't want to throw out your, uh, you know. Oh, okay. Okay. Uh, that's why you were in, you were in the background playing it last time. Yeah. Yeah. Cause it, it's so high pitched, you know? So is, do you want me to do it? Yeah, go ahead. You don't mind? Guys, all good? No, of course not. All right, it's called She Moves She moves to the Fair. Hey, Sid, you always come on late, Sid. All right, so I'm stepping back. Bye. Nice background, too, right? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Oh yeah, tree. It's a little, it's a little hype, it's a little hype, it's guys. Better, better if we're all sitting in a room together and all jamming. You know, I'd love to jam with James and Thomas. And, you know, then that would cool. be that'd be perfect. You know, you know, there wouldn't be no echoes or stuff like that. There. Yeah, I heard some echo. I don't know where it was coming from. To be honest with you. Um, yeah, but no, all good, all good, all good, guys. Well, well, Ronnie S said men don't have any rights. So. <laughs> <laughs> 
dirty beer. Oh. Wait a minute, let's go to the dirty beer. Uh, there we go. Oh. Oh. oh, well, I can tell you I'm that I drank both it. today. I had one of Collins Miller Lights. Thank you for the beer, sir. I had <laughs> uh, what did I start with? I forget. And then I start, and then I go to, oh boy, big, uh, big little thing IPA from Sierra Nevada. I kind of feel like each of the beers have their own merits, and they definitely require. I don't know if they require anything, but there's there, there's good times for each of those styles of beers. I understand if people aren't into the macro beers for the low amount of flavor or ABV or the not so um, locally sourced, really great ingredients in them. But I think both styles have a lot of merits. And if you go onto websites and you're bashing beers because of what they are versus what or, or you're bashing them because you have a preconceived notion about it and you're not looking at it for what it is. I think you're doing the macro versus craft beer a disservice. And I like to review them all because I think they all are pretty good for the most part. So mm -hmm. that's my take on that question. Yeah. I mean, I mean, yeah, I would say, yeah, Eric, Eric is most qualified to answer that. I mean, I. I don't like many macros, like, but I do like some, like the Modelo line. Yep. Um, I like the Canadian beers as a as a macro. I think they're good quality. I notice. I, get, I I think I get the heartburn. For the the, uh, the ones that use cheap adjunct ingredients, uh, like mm -hmm. nationally, advertised, nationally advertised beer. Uh, I never get sick at all from any craft beer or ale or stout or porter. Right, right. No, me, I, you know, the, the only thing I'm exposed to is, you know, I, I live, you know, Northern Virginia, but out in the country, you know, little town, two and a half thousand people. But there's a lot of craft, you know, breweries around, so it's a lot of local beers, lagers coming in, and there's two of them that I always stick to. It's Lo Lovettsville Lager, which is the name of the, the town I live in, or another one's called Pontoon. It's like the old, you know, the old gambling game. And uh, they're light beers, but they're still like, they're 5.6, you know what I mean? They're still, they're still, you know, they still got a kick, you know, more than Miller Lite, you know? So... That that's what I enjoy, you know. Probably tonight after I stop chatting, you guys will probably head down for one beer, and then come back, you know, and then you know, because up, up up for work obviously early in the morning, you know. Yeah. I, I don't normally go out that much, you know, but I'll probably head for a head for a pint. But th those are good beers, you know. But that might be off kind of off topic of what came up, but. It's just you know my experience with the with the beers. I drank Guinness for years, for years. Back in the early days, I could have knocked ten or eleven Guinness, no problem, no problem. Oh, yeah. yeah, nice glass, Tom. Nice, nice glass. Yeah, I could, I could have, I could have, I drank the Guinness. It was like pints they bathed the band. Yeah, you know, they were just going down. And back in those days, you were out playing sessions, also, you know. You know, you're playing in pubs. I, an old friend of mine, he actually, he drove a, a truck for Guinness, so he delivered all the kegs all around the north of Ireland. So he had so many contacts. His name is Jerry Arbuckle. And uh, Jerry used to get, Jerry, Pierce McCallion, and myself, Jerry used to get us all the gigs up all around Northern Ireland. So every, like, Friday and Saturday, we jumped in. Pierce's little fucking beater. Uh, you know, yeah. Packed everything in the back of it. And we headed up all around these places and just, just played music. You know, like, like Thomas was doing or, you know, some of the stuff I was doing or like, you know, James, James was doing. And yeah, we just traveled all around. It was, you get paid, you didn't get paid a lot of money. You know, you got paid, no. but it was, it was free pints of Guinness, you know? Yeah. And, uh, 
saying that Pierce was a designated driver, but he still had a few, you know. Um, no, it was good, good times, yeah. Last place that we played, mm -hmm. my band, uh, Oxblood Forge, in the state of Rhode Island, in Providence, Rhode Island, the capital. We played for, we opened for 80s metal band Anvil, and the, the venue for the entirety of the band, which is one guy is not drinking anymore thanks to uh, appendicitis. We'll go figure that one out. But the whole mm -hmm. thing gets a $75 bar tab for free. That's yeah. pretty crazy. But um, yeah. if we're considering, which is that's pretty good, but if we're considering, I forgot the fact that you could probably just consider Guinness to be a macro yeah. beer. It probably is. If that's a macro beer, I'm good with macro beer. Like if I had a desert island beer, you only have one beer. You only get one beer on the desert island. I think Guinness would suffice pretty well. Guinness would <laughs> I think yeah, so. right? Even in the can. The bottle, I'll, I'll accept the bottle, but the cans, will look good at home. Yeah. Mm -hmm. One beer for the rest of my life, I'd be happy with that one. <laughs> yeah, no, I, I, I used to love doing it uh, years ago, you know. I haven't played anything now in five years, except it was like a memorial thing I done one time for an old acquaintance who passed away 2017 48 years old lung cancer but um that was the last time i just played for his fundraiser you know but um but I, I i went solo tom jim commodore I, w I went solo and it was all right you know i just hated carting all my fucking gear around you know an hour and a half up on the Frederick, Maryland, or wherever I was going, you know, yep. Fairfax, Virginia, and you know, you were getting, you were getting, you know, the check was two fifty, you know, two fifty for four hours, which I hate. I hate doing four hours. I always like to do three, right? Because that's that, that's what I'm at my best. That extra hour just exhausts me mentally. You know, and especially if you're pissing in the wind, you know, uh, you know, if, if you're playing in a place and people aren't exactly there to hear you, you know, they're just there to drink and you're pissing in the wind, you know, um, but that 250, but then there was 15% went to the promoter, which in, in Washington, D.C., Virginia is James Turner Productions. So there was fifteen percent came off that day, home. but I, I got the rest, and it was all right. It was a good a good side side earner, you know. Um, but the only thing was, you know, getting up and then having to go to your regular job the next day, you know. And that just, oh yeah, I know what you mean by that. Yeah, yeah, just bar I just totally burned out, you know what I mean? And uh, then I stopped. I just stopped. You know. Yeah. yeah. The, t the TV volume got louder, uh, Colin. Yep, so somebody watching TV here. Huh. Yeah. It should be Well, yeah, posted in the, well, I'm going to, well. Uh, uh, you know what? It was my fucking Alexa radio. Oh, shit. It, uh, oh. It went, I was playing 80s music all weekend. So I'm li reliving the 80s. My uh, my band my band is doing. I posted in the private chat, but my band's doing a couple of dates mm -hmm. with some other with some other fellow band bands, and we're going the sixteenth of September through the eighteenth of September. We're going to be in Wilmington, Delaware, the sixteenth. Uh, the seventeenth, we're actually going to be in Richmond, Virginia, and the eighteenth, we're going to oh. be in uh, Baltimore, Maryland. If anybody oh, is in that oh. area and wants to say hello to and check out some Oxwood Forge. Yeah, that's right. And 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 uh, um, what did Alex say? He doesn't know how he's gonna get there. Yeah, he said that he would like to. He, maybe his brother would uh, want to go to that. But yeah. actually, maybe the answer to that is his buddy there, B.J. Taylor, that runs the uh, that worked at that Canals Liquor Store. Maybe they would want to come along. Yeah, and he can, and they can, they can take Alex with them. You know, apparently, it's from yeah. Maple Shade, New Jersey, to Wilmington, Delaware, is forty-five minutes. That doesn't seem so bad. That's not yeah. bad. Yeah, Baltimore to me is for me is it's only like maybe I would say two hours traffic. Okay. Yeah, and and my answer to Sid is yes. 
Yes, Sid. An answer to your question. Yes. Yeah, I saw that one coming up there. It was quite, <laughs> quite, quite funny. It was quite funny. <laughs> I got to read that again. What? Yes. <laughs> yes, he will be back, uh, Ron. <laughs> His lungs are coming out. He will be back. <sighs> anyway. He knows. He knows. Ronnie knows. Yeah. But uh, yeah, and I'm, uh, I'm, uh, I'm, I might be like five minutes from the second, the second exit over the GW bridge, I ninety five GW. I'm like, I'm like very close to the uh, to that. Uh, yeah, um, but um, this is the first long distance gig that you guys had. Yeah, this is the first time that we're going really out of out of the New England area. A couple, uh, we played up in Portland, Maine, on Memorial Day weekend, oh. which I it was it's two and a half hour drive for me, and I was like, I do not want to uh, go about dri driving up there, playing a late gig, and then BC's beers, and then cats out of the bag, BC's beers. I didn't want to drive two and a half hours away from where I live right now, and then have a late gig and drive two and a half hours back home. So I was like, I'm going to get a hotel. And this is the worst time to do it. Thanks to it being Memorial Day weekend. But the bass player and I split the uh, cost of the room. So he's, so that was a little cheaper. But $249 was the cheapest you could get that weekend in Portland, Maine. It was nuts. Hey, Tom, if you guys are traveling down that far, look up James Turner Productions. Okay. It does all the promotions in Virginia and Washington, mm -hmm. D.C. Because okay. where you're where you're going to, it's right on the cusp. Got gotcha. you. Know, it, it's right there. Look, uh, his name is Chip. His name, his name is Chip Sigman, and I used to work with him. And he used to he used to book me out, you know, one at least once a week because that's all I could do at the time. Gotcha. Chip Sigman, yeah, James Turner Productions. You know, if you if you're if you guys are willing to travel, you know, that far coming south, yeah. Um, Check him out, man. You know, he, you know, he, he gets you a lot of venues. Yeah, he, and he's a he's a gentleman. Chip Segman, he's a gentleman. Mm -hmm. A gentleman. We'll see. They did with website. Yeah. There. I found it. I found his information already. Cool. Right on. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, he's and, a, and you guys are gonna have you guys are gonna be selling CDs at, at your events. Right. Yeah, we got CDs. We got new T-shirt designs. We got we got merchandise ready to go. Very good. Yeah, so man, that's finished, really awesome. Just finished uh, Friday night. Uh, the 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 tracking for the tracking and the editing in the studio for four new songs. I think we're gonna try to. We had a little bit of bad luck last time. Not that the album came out bad, but we had a little bad luck last time trying to shop out the album and seeing where it was gonna go, or who might want to pick it up for distribution or whatever. But we're gonna take this as a demo. Of what we're doing in the next four songs that we just recorded and. See if anybody wants to link up with it before we start to do any post-production stuff. So we're going to take our time with whatever we're going to do on the next set of material. But well, hopefully we'll be playing most of it, most of these four new songs in September. Yeah, I'm an ace. And, and you know what, Tom? You know, if, if you do get in contact with Chip, mention my name, Colin sure. McMahon. Yeah, because he, he'll remember me. You know, wow. he'll, he'll remember me. You know, he actually came out and watched some of my shows. You know, and he, you know, just mention my name and he'll know. And you guys, hey, onwards and upwards, keep doing yeah, what you're doing. Are. Keep, yeah, yeah, brother, keep doing what you're doing. Keep doing what you're doing. It's beautiful. Guitar playing is beautiful. Big, 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 big sound of that tater. I can't imagine what else you can do, you know, yeah. given all our instruments, but big, big sound. I can, yeah. I can read it like a book, you know what yeah. I mean? Yeah. Yeah, beautiful stuff. Yeah, bro. Thank you. See, yeah, hey, yeah. on James' channel, we meet everybody, right? <laughs> yeah, it'd be, it'd Colin, be great. It'd be great if Colin and Alex uh, could could go to the gig, the event, and, yeah. and, and meet yeah. uh, 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 Eric Fornfelter and the band. That'd be cool. Uh, um, that that that'll be good. Uh, um, and then you know, as, as things progress and the ba the band is more in demand, they'll they'll be going on the road uh, more often. Uh, on the road again, on the road. 
down that road again. Getting paid more. I, I just making music with my friends. I can't wait to get on the road again. <laughs> there you go. Go my way. This whole world is going my way, turning my way on the road again. Just can't wait to get on that road again. Life I love is making music with my friends. I can't wait to get on the road again. Oh, no. <laughs> Herp Alpert and the T one brush. Yo, there you go. <laughs> nice. Awesome. Fish for me. <laughs> a golden. I never been to a golden corral. There's one in really. There's one in Teaneck. I never been to a golden corral. I don't have those in my neck of the woods. <laughs> but I'm a little leery because they. You know the health department. <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah, we get one of Manassas, and I took my ex ex date years ago, and uh, she came outside and she vomited. <laughs> oh, ouch! Well, yeah, let me, let me yes, to, yeah. Let me stick to uh, the quality places. It's like a big buffet, you know. She 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 came out and she boked. She boked all over the all over the fucking street. Yeah, she can she can eat, you know what I mean? She's an eater, she's like me. But she got food poison, you think, right? Yeah, yeah, it was I don't know, she was eating everything, you know. And uh no, she booked when she came out and say hey, how come the, this pencil night geek uh that, that runs uh StreamYard, how come the link didn't uh, it, I mean it appeared but but the, it didn't light up? I don't know. It didn't light up. Cool. Google Drive or to make it up? Oh, uh, I don't know. Just copy and paste that thing and you can check out some uh, oh, okay. the new material we're, we're working on. <laughs> <laughs> yes, Ronnie, she vomited. <laughs> hey, Jason Cleveland, he's back. <laughs> Jason, brother. <laughs> oh, no. Well, oh, man. I oh. just, um, the problem is, um, I, you know, I mean, I wouldn't want to sit across from uh, a big eater. They could sit alongside of me if they want, if, as long as they're not elbowing me. But to sit across from a big eater that talks a lot when they eat, they'll be spitting. They'll be spitting uh, 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 aerosol droplets and little pieces of food at me, and I don't like. That. I wouldn't like that. Yeah, I wouldn't like that. And uh, I'll wait till Colin comes back, and then I'll I'll say so uh, so long, as we run Jeremy. Uh, I mean, uh, Peter North knows the other guy. Peter North, holy crap! No, not Peter North. Uh, John Holmes used to say so Who's long. You born, sir? Yeah. yeah. So <laughs> long. <the> party, eh? <laughs> Peter North. Yeah, he, no, oh, Peter he North. Was the, he's the one that used to shoot like a pint of uh, semen up in the air. Yeah, but he probably had like a hose or something next to him, and it probably wasn't. Yeah, 
<laughs> he, he had a bottle of Jer Jergens, Jergens lotion, and then it, as he well, shot. The worst, it, one, the worst one is 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 there's an actual skin lotion out called Vaseline for men. Oh shit! All right, <laughs> anyways, <laughs> we're, we're heading out here, aren't we? I'm glad I put this up, brought the subject up because <laughs> when I go when I go on the internet, I mean on social media, they advertise the manscaping kit. It's like a complete kit <laughs> everywhere for manscape, and they have a different set of clippers for different purposes. Cut the balls out, yes, sir. Yeah, but at the end it says, "Your balls will thank you for this." <laughs> They, they actually mentioned the word balls. They mentioned the word balls in the, in the advertisement. Oh, oh, yeah. No. <laughs> I mean, what? I mean, I mean, what's next? Uh, anal, anal, anal bleaching or anal, anal uh, trimming? I, yeah. Oh, they have it. Listen, in in the manscaping kit. Now, the funniest thing is they have a ball deodorant for the balls. Mm -hmm. They have they have a male genitalia, uh, no, uh, actually a, a scrotum deodorant. I was, it was <laughs> hilarious, but it really exists. And I, I mean, don't they have any shame anymore these days? I mean. After using a fucking manscape, you need to put on the fast acting to act them. You know, the, the cure, cure, cure the jock itch. Ugh. Peter North no. worked for Dave's Killer Bread with his dirty <laughs> cocktail special sauce. <laughs> oh, <my. laughs> Manscape your ass. Yeah, but the, uh, you know, the, I know the trannies get their anus bleached. I know that's fair. Oh, it must be hot. <laughs> that guy looks, yeah, that guy looks like he gets his anus bleached to want to be on that's, uh, that's Mr. Leahy from the trailer park booze. Uh, <laughs> oh man. The Commodore, Ronnie S says Commodore's made of Viagra. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> I have balls of steel. He has titanium balls. Yeah, yeah. It's the titanium balls. Uh, uh, you see, Schwarzenegger's son looks just like him. Uh, uh, jo Joseph, uh, is that his illegitimate son? Yeah, he didn't, uh, he didn't, he, he didn't have the Kennedy. He's the fool yeah, around with, the, the house with wife. Mildred, Mildred Pena, the housekeeper. When Maria, yeah. when Maria Slivers away, when she Maria was, Slive, Maria Slive go bye bye. Mildred come into the bedroom, Maria Slivers is not yeah. here. But I was not here right now. No. She got he picked up by the chopper. She went. Oh, she went away in the chopper. I'll be back. She went to the chopper. So he impregnated. He. Uh, he bit the arse of the housewife. Yeah. Well, he pollinated the uh, the housekeeper. Yeah. And, uh, <laughs> right. Yeah, he pollinated the house. And Joseph <laughs> uh, Schwarzenegger is the is the product. Uh, he is the product. That's fucking crazy. Yeah. Well, it's his real son. Oh, you mean, well, out of Wedcock. He was born <laughs> at, a, at a Wedcock. Wedcock. I mean, wedlock. Well, imagine I'm married, married under the Kennedys, you know what I mean? And then he goes and bangs the fucking housewife. You know? Yeah, she looks like a bowling ball. I mean, yeah, yeah. Peter Driver must be very boring in bed for him hmm. to. To, to, for him to get aroused, aroused by a a little midget bowling bowling ball, <laughs> he um, must have been on the whiskey or something, you know. He, the schnapps, he was drinking the schnapps. Mm -hmm. The maid, yeah, not a housewife, no, the maid, yeah. I'm sorry, the maid, the, the, the whole, It's the same thing. It's the same thing. Yeah, I said <laughs> where, where you're coming from. <laughs> uh, he had uh, the Ronnie S says the Commodore has many illegitimate children from various different women. <laughs> what? No, he left the Commodore. He left without saying anything. Actually, goodbye, Commodore. Oh, that's how he rolls. He doesn't say. Anything. Yeah, he uh, he finished working in the office, and he didn't. He usually says I bid adieu, but he he didn't say that this time. Oh mm -hmm. well. 
uh, uh, yeah, he's uh, he's Mr. Titanium balls. Uh, but you know, it's incredible. You know, the, the, hey, that looks good. The deodorant. Um, there we go. Balls. <laughs> deodorant <laughs> balls. Wait a minute. You came up to me and you said deodorant balls. What? Now, uh, I think I think Jason Cleveland said he likes when you turn your head into a chicken nugget. Who me? What one uh, animation where you became a chicken nugget? Uh, you have to explain that one. <laughs> Do a bit, bit an alpha male with the ladies. Whew. I cannot confirm or deny that. Sid. Brian was fighting. He's fighting him off with his stick between his his uh, Yes, the wheel. I, I will. I will get the wheel tweaked for Good. next time. Yes, I will. You I can will set it up and do whatever you want on that wheel. Yeah, I can get the wheel tweaked. The, 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 the reason why the wheel has been working so splendidly is because I have it on. Firefox instead of having it uh, on uh, Google Chrome, which I have everything else on. So, you know, it, it works better. Uh, yeah, actually, uh, yeah, I'll get it set up. It, uh -huh. it, we, have, we have a very amusing photo of the man uh, that will be in the center of the wheel. And because he is the biggest crybaby <laughs> that was ever conceived. Oh, oh, oh. And he really is. I mean. <laughs> your crybaby sound there, James? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> there it is. Oh, that's funny. Uh, BC in the wheel. What's up? Play the wheel. They make a deal. Alpha males go. Only alpha males go on the wheel. Yeah, no, they go on the wheel uh, for other reasons. They're off the rails, not on the wheels. Yeah. Cool. Now, 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 see, they, they got to make me go through the whole routine. Blah, blah, blah. There we go. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> oh, Jesus. Terrible. A Mario video game. What does the wheel say? We can't. Oh, there it is. Attention. Insecure attention. <laughs> All right, we're going to have to uh, close this one out tonight. Go ahead, man. Yeah, no, let me say, insecure attention whore, I, I know, but, you know, they, they're attention whores. Uh, <laughs> they, 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 they usually, uh, there's a certain attention whore that comes on uh, um, Eric's Wildcard Wednesday that uh, awesome. interrupt everyone. and uh, Captain Interruptus. Yeah. Captain Interruptus is right. <laughs> Oh uh, yeah, the, the false prophet is uh, Mike Hunt, Mr. Mike Hunt. <laughs> He's the uh, false prophet. Hilton uh, Goldsmith, whatever. You want to yeah, say. yeah. The guy takes over the show. He, he he talks at people. He doesn't converse with people. You know. And then you post Well, this is exactly why a certain individual is going in the middle of the wheel for a long time of coming. Because uh, the, the smoke, snowflake man, baby, I mean, how long do you have to be upset about something so silly? You know, it's not like, uh, yeah. 
it's not like someone said something really horrible to him, something personal. You know, it's uh, get over it. Get over it. Now, the problem with Western Mike, and I, I told him, people are going to think you're like a cowboy. You're in San Francisco. Why don't you call yourself West Coast Beer Reviews? You're in San Francisco. You're not Western. I mean, you, you're 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 more West. You're Pacific more Beer West. Reviews. I don't know. Yeah, I mean, it's like somebody, like I Northern told, Beer Reviews, Northern California. Like I told uh, Gabrielle, I says, why don't you uh, start a YouTube channel and call it like Desert Southwest Beer Reviews or Sonoran Sonoran Desert Beer Reviews? And I said, wear the hat, wear the Zorro, black Zorro hat as a he gimmick. Goes, well, but well, no, he don't want it. Anytime, I know, I know certain people like this. No matter what anyone tells them about anything, they don't do it. They don't do it. They, they, it's got to come out of their mind. And he's crying to me about the hot sun in Arizona, but he doesn't it wear hats. It is Cheney bangable. Um, no, I, no, I'm a Republican. She's not bangable. No, there will be a cigarette. There will be a cigarette in the middle of the wheel. Oh, I think it's... No, I plead the fifth. I plead the fifth, but you might be right about that. He wants to be a cowboy... No, of course not. I'm a Republican. I don't even like that girl, so no. I, 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 just, just my two cents on politics is I don't like anything that's... A, a radical is a weird word, right? I don't like anything that's too one way or the other. I'm pretty... I, try, I think we all do. I try to be as middle of the road as possible, but if stuff just sounds batshit crazy from one side of the aisle, it's like, well, then, it's, then you're batshit crazy. Liz Cheney's the Cheney. And and uh, Dick Cheney <laughs> was the the master of the two wars that were put on a credit card. Mm -hmm. Put and, on a credit card. Uh, That's the way to put it. Yeah. The, the, the war, the industrial military industrial complex war profiteering. Yeah. He was raking in the, the fortunes with, with his cronies. So. Yeah. Uh, Mm -hmm. I don't. Uh, I don't. I don't trust any establishment politician that that wants to be there for life. Yeah. Yeah. That's it. You got it. Warmongers. Yeah. Well, um. I will get rid of this because uh, I have to order some Chinese takeout because I am getting hungry and it's after six p.m. Eastern. Right. Thank you, everyone. Colin McManaman, thank you. Uh, Eric Farnfelter of Oxblood Forge, thank you. Uh, Jordy, he left. Hey. Thank you, Jordy. Uh, thank uh, uh, Ronald J. Tyrio. Uh Thank Commodore, even though he didn't. One day we'll hear him speak. I look forward yeah, to him. yeah. The voice from the gallery. Well, you know what it is? He's another stubborn guy. He, uh -oh. I told him, you know, you really could say a few words every now and then you don't you don't have to totally be mute and and he had the the camera showing his head i says why don't you put the camera a little lower so we get a head shot you know from the up you like this from the that? upper chest yeah he had it like that and because i mentioned it he didn't fix it so you know there are people who are very spiteful and stubborn that's him in the chat, though. Uh, James, right? That's him in the chat, Commodore. Yeah, the one with the shiny bald head, uh, and he was at the office. He was inside of yeah, the that's office. Yeah, that's, that's the same person, right? Oh, yeah. I try oh, if I can. Yeah. Uh, he, he's a good guy. Yeah. Oh, no, he's guy. a good guy, but he's he's very hard-headed. He, 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 he does everything. He's very impulsive. Like, he won't, like, for instance... He'll send, let's say he's really good friends with um, um, with Eric, right? He'll send him something without asking him if he likes it. He'll like send him something that he absolutely cannot use and will not use. He'll oh. just 
impulsively does things. He's, yeah. Like, like when he was up here, we made plans, and then he suddenly changed the plans at the spur of the moment, the last minute. He like, he suddenly changes the plans. It, it drives me nuts because I like when I make plans with somebody, I have my my brain program what I'm gonna do. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? And then this, oh, like, yeah. like, like, because he feels like it, he just change it, changes the last. The last moment. All right, Sid. I'm gonna I'm gonna close out. Thank you for coming on, Ronnie. Yes, thank you for coming on. Cheers. Bye, yeah. everybody. Hey, yeah. All right. Thank you, everybody. Bye, bye. All right. Thank, you. thank you, James. Uh, be in touch soon. And uh, thank you so much for having me up today. It was a great conversation as always. Thank you. Thank you for the music very much. And we'll 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 do we'll do it again. All right, James. Thank you. Have, have a good evening, brother. Bye-bye. You too. Bye. Have a good